and that along with a couple of other reasons is why I have to give this least favorite. Oh! Yeah. No! That's insane. That's fucking. Welcome to Every Album Ever with Mike and Alex. My name is Michael Mansour, and I'm joined, as always, by my lovely, reliable co-host, Alexander Volt. Say hello. This is for cows. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And we're joined, if you're watching on YouTube, by my lovely brother once again. You saw him on the YMO episode, which did very well, by the way. I'm so happy that one did well. Right. And way back episode- Wonder why. Wonder why. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> and way back episode 10, Captain Beefheart, uh, my, my brother Robert. Hello. Hello. And uh, uh, what, are we doing, what are we doing today? Uh, we're doing, we're, we discuss every album by, by artists, except episode 100. We're doing the Mel, Mel, Melvins. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> adjustments here. Different setup. Yeah. Uh, we're doing Melvins. And this is our first multi- part series series, series. I, I don't want to say episode because there will be a beginning and an end here yep yep uh so we kept teasing like episode 100 as being a big deal it's not a big deal all right it's not a fucking big deal we just like the melvins and we had to find a way to keep doing it so the rule it wasn't a rule it was a very loose rule of <laughs> all the rules are pretty loose fuck rules dude <laughs> fuck the system there's, there's no rules there's very Okay, there was a, it was a loose rule of we prefer that the artist is dead or broken up, and we still prefer that. But we will make exceptions. We've had, we've made exceptions, right? We're yes, liars. We made exceptions, yes. but we will make more exceptions. And this includes artists like the Melvins who keep releasing shit multiple times a year. Yes. Also, you know, basically our two year anniversary episode. Yeah, for the most part. We're going to do something me and Mike both lo love. love. Not even like love. love. Yeah. And I and the reason Robert is here is because I would not love them if he didn't so insensitively force the Melvins upon me at eight years old. Oh, shucks. <laughs> That's too young. I, too don't, young. I don't remember it too that young. way. I don't either. Because I don't was, remember it at all, actually. Was, <laughs> I, I don't remember the first thing I heard. I couldn't tell you. Um something early something that we're going to discuss today uh for sure but in all, in all fairness i wasn't ready either when i first heard them but. no one's ready no one's ready <laughs> no i would i it took it took me like a few years of them this being in like the back of my brain for me to be like oh shit i love this band and boy boy do we love this band so this is uh yeah the first in a series there's probably going to be three main episodes and then a loose ends Two, uh, two loose ends. Probably maybe. two loose ends. So this episode is part one, obviously. This will be covering years 1986 through 1997, all the Atlantic years when they started. Uh, none of the EPs. EPs will be delegated to a loose ends episode in the future, mm -hmm. along with Col collaboration. Collabs. Yeah. Collab albums. So yeah, episode, uh, the, the part two of this will be years uh, uh, 1999 to 2010. And then we haven't scheduled the third one yet, but that... 2010 to now pretty much uh so the part two will be dropping episode 110 so in 10 weeks from now it sounds like a long time but they go by fast and you know we want to space out we don't want to get fatigued on the melvins that's ridiculous that's not nice to the band so we're, we're spacing them out but before getting to any of that uh spotify plays on this era this very beefy era of the melvins you can find a link in the description along with plays associated with every episode we've done every album ever yada yada every album ever.com yada 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 uh patreon.com slash every album ever if you want to help support us you can jump the line when support uh we're suggesting an artist for us along with uh bonus episodes early access to certain episodes and discounts off merch by the way by the way we finally did it New merch, new merch. If you're listening on audio, Spotify, on Apple or whatever, you'll see a new logo. That's our newish design designed by the very talented Leah Samuels. Thank you. And thank you uh, for paying her. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, you pay for audio. Yeah, yeah. it works out in the end. And um, if you like that T-shirt design, uh, you can follow her at Tiny Toad at, on Instagram at Tiny Toad. And uh yeah, I'll, I'll put some, you'll, you should be seeing the, the shirt now uh, on the, the video if you're watching the video. If you're not watching the video, watch the video or something. But uh, yeah, link in the description as always, everyalbumember.com. Patreon, Patreon members get discount, like 20% off or something ridiculous because we don't make a lot of money off of that or any money. But it's it's all because we like it and it's very cool looking. So get that if you're cool. 
Okay. I, I'm going to get one. Hell yeah, you're going to get one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So I guess that's all the plugs for now out of the way. Yes. Actually, no. Screw that. Just do our plugs up for, front so Robert can promote his shit. Right? Oh, yeah. What you got, okay. what you got going front. on? All right. Okay. Front. Well, I host a monthly radio show on NTS called The Athenian Marketplace, which is also the name of my music project that's releasing its first album on September 24th. So uh, This will be out in time for that. It'll be out in time. Oh, yeah. So yeah. link in the description for that. Not for the album because it won't be out yet by the time this airs, but... Uh, and Instagram. Instagram is hoodpass.wick. God damn it, Robert. What? <laughs> it's so complicated. <laughs> is it? <laughs> uh, okay, the whole marketplace hold. itself isn't. Wait, 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 say it again? Uh, that's more complicated than like the Athenian marketplace. It is. It is. Because what is it again? Hoodpass.wick. Alex, spell that. I follow him, so I. Damn it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> not, I know it's how it's. Pure. It's not a pure uh, test. Uh, yeah. You all should follow me, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, yeah, so follow him. Yeah, of course. Links in the description, all that. It's very exciting. Very exciting. And he's also doing the artwork for my upcoming EP at some point, which is also very exciting. If you like our old designs, you like him already. Um, and yeah, me at Pander Monkey and Alex. At Mother Puncture. We do all the stuff. We do all the stuff. Although I haven't posted in like a month because I'm exhausted. But let's move on. I try. Let's do the, what, what we got. Okay, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 1986, 1987. What do we got to know about the Melvins? Formed in 83 by King Buzzo, Matt Wilkin, and Mike Dillard. Dillard would leave, be replaced by Dale Crover. Uh, they were, from the get-go, played slower and heavier than the other bands, which... If uh, you're familiar with the Melvins, it's slow and heavy stuff. And uh, yeah, they were eventually picked up by a record, CZ Records. Sleazy Records, more like. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is some sleazy music. Oh, but uh, yeah, so they would put out the Deep Six and their six song EP, which was eventually re-released as like the 26 songs on Ipecac. And uh, yeah, yeah, that kind of leads us into all this stuff. So is there any neat trivia about the early, early, early years? Because not that I could, not that I could find. Robert, dig your, dig the excesses of your, of your, of your brain. Yeah, I thought, well, I think there was a little period where they did play faster music before they started. Okay. Oh yeah, they were yeah, really yeah. fast. Well, not really um, fast, but like. Pretty fast. Closer to like a, a hardcore punk yeah. band, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Uh, even that's the stuff right. on the on the Deep Six compilation, yeah. some of that's actually like faster stuff. I just remember Maybe the, the Mangle demos from 83, which yeah. I own oh, yeah. somewhere. It's somewhere, uh, which we're not covering, but that's like a... That's really fast. I forgot about that. And mm -hmm. and Buzz sounds so different than we what we know. He sounds like, Vocals are different. Yeah. yeah. Would, um, even on the first album. But... Yeah. I don't know. Uh, well, Dale Crover joined in 84... And so I don't know if that was before or after they started slowing down, though. Uh, wh where did Dale come from? Dale Heaven? Yes. That's where Heaven. 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 Yes, he is <laughs> one of, of the gods. <laughs> yeah. No, he's one of the greatest like heavy metal drummers There's ever. Drummers um, alive, period. If, yeah. if, I'd go far as he just rock drummers yeah. in general. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if if you're a drummer or know anything about drumming and you know what a flam is, no one <laughs> They sound like fireworks when he yeah. does. It. No one does a flam better than Dale Crover. No one hits harder than Dale Crover. And like, something about he I'll, can make one tom hit whoop your ass. One tom yeah. hit. <laughs> oh, I have one of his drumsticks that he threw out in the crowd. It's gigantic. It's like <laughs> almost, like a marching stick, or it's, yeah, it's like novelty how huge it is. Holy like, shit. That's beautiful. But yeah, cool. he's like one of the best best in the business. And uh, any any drummer who says otherwise is full of shit. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, wait, where'd you say they're from? Uh, Washington. Oh, yeah. Aber Aber yeah. Aberdeen. Aberdeen. Uh, I thought it was Montesano. Oh, oh that's yeah. what. No, you're right. That's uh, where they started off. And then Dale from Aberdeen? I believe so. Let me let me double check this. Uh, so the albums we're going to be covering, we're covering... Uh, Nine albums today. 
I know, which, which was a d- delightfully breezy homework. It was, was simple. Oh, so simple homework. Go ahead. Yeah, Crover is from Aberdeen. Okay, okay. Uh, delightfully simple homework. This was so nostalgic and so fun to go back to. Uh, but uh, first album, we're covering 1987. Last album that we're we'll covering, 1997. So, uh, yeah, nice, nice uh, whole era here. Whole era. They don't sound, they, none, of these, none of these eras sound alike. They're, they're practically different bands. Like, you know, it's them writing it, but goddamn, these guys are just, they, they just never made like two albums that were the same. May, it's wild. Maybe. Well, maybe, but there's similar similarities, but like the, the growth is like noticeable. It is substantial. The growth. Yeah. Fucking crazy. Uh, but whatever. Let's just jump into it before. Cause this is going to be fucking. Long yeah, we're going to be boy. here. Get comfortable. Who boy. So this is 1987's. Glee Pores Treatments. You want this opening track or you want that second track? <laughs> Why not? A little bit of both. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Shit, that's a good ass question. You're right. You gotta do the, yeah. yeah. It takes seven years to start. It does. But this is what they are. Yes. Also, I don't think I listen to this album before this are you serious what? yeah oh my god blasphemy for me there is uh, there's a couple albums that i hadn't heard before this but it, this okay one I, that, I heard on repeat, okay yeah. that makes me feel better because oh yeah there are like a million albums there's a so. lot of albums. <laughs> already with those, those i love toms. the drum sound on this album it's no, gigantic i don't like it i don't love it i don't i, th- I think I think it gets overlooked a lot. Nobody ever talks about this album like saying, oh, it's got a good drum sound. Because it has a bad drum sound. <laughs> no, it's so memorable. It's, well, it, it is was, extremely it, memorable. It feels like, oh, we only have X amount of dollars, so this is how the drums sound. It's not like by design. I mean, I, for low budget. The reverb seems pretty intentional. The reverb is super intentional, but I think it's too much. Here, it sounds fucking amazing. With all the, the sludgier stuff, you want that but this is a fast like this is not a fast song but this is a fast album yeah I mean the, the song's gonna end anytime soon but hold on no no everybody will say that this song is kind of like I don't know emblematic of their whole style but I, it's the only one like it on the album like all the rest are actually kind of fast they, yeah yeah this yeah. is not indicative of the album whatsoever yeah. but I do think it's a sludge masterpiece this song it is yeah, yeah. well the album too I think I would probably say that Damn. sludge <laughs> just or just the masterpiece part Robert blowing his load early here no no actually no no okay I'm excited no. I'm excited to talk about this album it's like, we have to let the song keep going keep going keep going well, I get no pleasure in having to pick, like, do picks for any of these albums. It's just so hard for me to decide, but um, I could easily see this being somebody's favorite. Yeah, like, I've um, heard it plenty of times. At least from this era. Yeah. Uh, but no, I didn't pick it as best or personal. Oh. That, I am so surprised. Because I grew did. up with him yeah. adoring this album and him considering only, it the best. I actually only love this album more as time goes on. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like, oh man, I... I I'm surprised I'm not giving it any awards, but... Holy shit. This feedback is just... It's just feedback, but it... The vibe, dude. The feedback is so good on this it's album. It's incredible. It's like... Calculated, or yeah. sounds calculated. And mm. They're very good. They're very good at it. And like, there is a song here. It's not just this riff. Like, it goes into stuff, but it just takes like 20 minutes. Well, I, I think, did we talk about that on an episode about how like their songs kind of start like backward? Yeah. Like how most bands end their songs. Yeah, they start, they start with the... Dum. The song itself isn't that long, though, is it, right? No, it's, it's fucking... It's like seven minutes, right? Is yeah, it? we're like halfway through it. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you're the whole uh, goddamn well, thing, all yeah. right? I'm, I'm thinking a, about it in context of I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to the next song now. This is the All like... right. Oh, God, this is too fucking good. So this is like a really satisfying album to yep. listen to. If you like riffs. It's a lot of riffs. Oh, I did, uh, much like... I mean, the... The whole band's underrated, like, 
Fuzz is just like he's so good. This riff right here fucking kills me. And uh yeah. Oh it's like thrash metal riffs through the filter of the Melvin. Yeah, it and the arrangements are so goddamn proggy. Like you never I wanna hear at least a little bit of his vocals yeah. you listen to this long. You can hear it, but yeah. it is different. Yeah. Oh God damn it! That was the longest we probably listened to any, any oh, opening. We we yeah we listened to like almost five minutes there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so what a, a hell of an opening to a fucking career. This is it's a first of all, this is like the only album that sounds like this. Of yeah. the guitar playing too. He's doing stuff that I don't really remember him doing on later albums. Yeah, like a lot of uh, uh, artificial harmonic kind mm. of stuff, which is stereotypical like heavy metal playing, right, but right. somehow. Doesn't sound cheesy on here. No, no. Well, because Dale's the fucking star here. I feel like. I mean, d- d- first of all, it's impossible to ignore the drums because they're so loud. Yeah. They're so much louder than everything yeah. else. And Robert likes that, but I can see people not liking that. It's so big and reverb and it's like I said before, like it gets muddy when it's so fast. And the you know the the two songs where I was like, man, these drums sound rough. Not like playing wise. This is the way they sound was uh, happy gray or black, and then leech. You don't like them on Leech? No. Dude. I think they sound rough on both. Really? And that's yeah. a slower song, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was a what, Green River song, right? Yes. They just gave to him? It's like a throwaway. Because, yeah, yeah, Green River didn't want to play it because it was too slow. Yeah. And it's so great as a Melvin song. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Morons. <laughs> uh, Buzz took it and added uh, an extra E to the title. It was uh, Leech. Oh, so it was <laughs> that's why it has three E's. Yeah. I was wondering why. Interesting. Uh, great goddamn song. They still play it to, to this day, don't they? Uh, the staple. They, yeah. Staple they, song there. Yeah, they probably play. I mean, I want, I forget when it was. I think it was 2012 in January. They did a residency at Spaceland. Spaceland. Yeah. And I went to all those shows except for one. So I mm-hmm. have probably seen them play. Almost every song they That's have. That's ridiculous. How, how many times total have you seen them in concert? I've, I've lost track. Okay. I don't know. That's a That's, good thing. That's how many it is, though. I haven't seen them. I would love to see them again, because the last time I saw them was Tool try to do like this mini festival thing, and it, it, it this sucked. It sucked seeing like... the This venue over in San Bernardino, like the sun is like right in your eyes it's where they used to have all the Ozfest at um this during it's like you need that second stage you need to have the smaller bands on the second stage because if they're on the main stage you can't enjoy it this sun's just in your eyes like oh yeah i i don't know if i count that one but Mm -hmm. that was the last time i saw them i want to see them twice and both time no yeah both times at the same place in like oh yeah observatory yep (laughs) You, uh, I, I seen him twice and Buzz solo once. Oh, oh, that's right. I saw Buzz. Yeah, that's right. You went without me, and I was like super bitter about it for a long that, time. That was a free was show like, too. There's... Go. Like you weren't even like remotely like ready to go, and I was like, I don't. Well, I thought it yeah. would be late. Yeah, I, I remember like I just remember like, wait, where is he? Where did he go? Is he? Did he leave? No. No! <laughs> One of the rare times I took initiative. Yeah, I did Damn. it for Buzz. <laughs> uh. What's it called? Okay, so I mean, there's a million. There's like 17 songs on here. They're all really short. Another thing uncharacteristic of their later stuff. A million short songs, and it's again, it's like it's like almost death metal in the sense that there's so many fucking riffs. Where do you? I don't even know where to start. Um, to me, one of my favorite songs is "Glow God." Hell yeah, yeah. hell yeah. yeah. "Glow God" what... followed by "Big as a Mountain." Yes, two back to back. It's like good. so good. That fucking twisted ass main riff to "Big as a Mountain." Ooh, ooh, it broke me. It broke me. <laughs> Uh, bitten, bitten into sympathy. sympathy. Uh, that kind of scratched my 
my sludge metal itch better. Yeah, it's like a fast sludge song. It's yeah, not super slow. And then uh, the title track, mm-hmm. uh, I kind of wish Buzz would do like high pitch vocals more often. You get like just a uh-huh. just a smattering of him diving. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's that. a pretty gnarly riff too. Yeah, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of fucking Septic Death. I never, I never heard, heard him. Never heard him. Not that I recall. It's the it's the you know P- Pusshead. It's oh, a, okay. It's yeah. a band he sung for okay. in the 80s. Okay. Uh, really ugly, really fast and gross. Uh, and that, that's like the most punky song in the album, I feel like. Mm. Just at least from the, the riff itself. It's my least favorite song in the album, though, for sure. The title the track? Title? Yeah. 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 It, it was for me for a while, but I don't know. I just grew to appreciate it. Mm. <laughs> I mean, it's just, I don't know. <laughs> There's just so much going on here that I like mm. that I can't really just say, oh, I don't really like this i mean to me it's a it's a it's a it's more heavy than there are like hooks or anything like i think the first song where uh as it was i'm like i think that's like the only song that's like has met i mean i'm sure they have melody but like stands out to me being like more like Musical. traditional song yeah. writing yeah there's a gajillion riffs on here and most of them are pretty freaking ugly but this is this is not an album you listen to one time or two times it's like there's two there's way too and i get no one ever wanted to do that it's a brutal it's such a brutal debut album like i it's an it is hell for a lot of people i feel like does the grunge tag make sense to anybody of, i mean Barely, of course a little, a little to, for me to me grunge is just you know it's sludge metal, but like it was that era of sludge metal to me. And it really wasn't sludge at this point, too. Well, it was barely like Black Flag. Yeah. It, so that was already punk. Too. Yeah. Side two of my war is like a, yeah. a big influence in sludge metal. But like the, the crossover between grunge and sludge is, you know, it's it's not even a Venn diagram. It's just a full circle to me. And I I do acknowledge like grunge bands like. You know, they got a little more musical. Yeah. Oh, than, way more. Yeah. So yeah. there's that difference. But it's the same. They all come from the same school. They come from the same place. But I find, find it so hard to call this any kind of sludge just because the only song is the first. And Leech a little bit. The first, yeah. The first, yeah, I Fly and, and Leech. Because everything is just so hardcore punky. But it's obviously not hardcore punk. It's just it's, its own fucking thing. Yeah. It's just. Yeah, I can't even, believe nothing else sounds like this. It seems odd that nothing else sounds like this. Yeah, I would say even as as young men, they were able to like f- filter music through their like their perspective. Crazy arrangements out the gate. I don't know, like they, these two were just made to be together, Buzz and Dale, like because the arrangements never they can get, get simpler in areas, but they never stop being uh, unpredictable. Mm-hmm. And this is uh this is like the, the the far extreme end of completely unpredictable. Uh hideous riffs very fun yeah I, I like it a lot but yeah. like god damn uh not for anybody uh not really in for some shit don't I, just spring us on anybody yeah no i think there's actually like uh a harder album to introduce people to which we'll we'll get around to on this episode but um this is like right below that for me. i think this, the second like there's two hard albums to listen. Then this would be the second one for me I'm personally. Curious to see what you think. I feel like there's some people that oh, if they hear the Melvins as like a grunge band or whatever, this isn't like the best starting point. Yeah, but if they keep hearing about them as like guys who help pioneer sludge or whatever, yeah. uh, it's probably the best starting point. Do you guys? It's to. Like it's really old, but uh, now, which is crazy, uh, that movie Juno mm-hmm. made me oh right made me laugh because um, Jason Bateman's character he used to be the manager for the Melvins, That's and there's hilarious. like a, a part where like um, Ellen Page and Jason Bateman are like having a falling out. She's like, "You're like so lame. You used to be like this rock star, and now you're just like some corporate sellout with you know like." a white white picket fence what would the melvins think <laughs> and uh I, re- I remember seeing interviews with them where they're like yeah they said her name like a hundred times in that movie but no one like came to license music and they're yeah, they're yeah. like they're like that's the story of our lives yeah. it's like yeah we're right there but no one makes that yeah. effort to they're not mysterious they're it, they're just 
couple nice guys that want to just be everyone's friend. Like, hey, you know, we're right here. You hang out. You fucking yeah. listen to music. <laughs> they're like, yeah, they're like, yeah, we would have fucking licensed our music out to that. So, like, little, little instance where they kind of made it into the mainstream because that movie was fucking gigantic when and it came out. Not enough. Not enough for them. See, I didn't even know that at I, all. I forgot that. Oh, I saw it years ago. Yeah, I remember going to watch it in the theaters. I was like, holy... And I thought like they were just saying it as like a throwaway band, but it comes up like multiple times. They are not a throwaway band. They're not a throwaway Still band. Still probably not going to watch the movie though. See, it's, <laughs> it's not a Robert movie. It's no, a, it's not a Robert movie. Romantic, quaint, quirky, kind of sad. Yeah, it, it, It's fine. It's fine. It has its place, and like anything that's you know, it, it blew up and got way too popular. So. Yeah, yeah. Unlike but, the Melvins, <laughs> unlike the Melvins, yes. <laughs> but let's move on. It's a great album, crazy, crazy, goddamn opening album or debut. Uh, but we have many, many more to get to. So this is 1989's Ozma. <laughs> And now we have Matt leaving bass guitar in steps Lori Black or Lorax, Mm -hmm. who is uh, Shirley Temple's daughter. Wild stuff. Insane connection. Weirdest connection. I didn't realize Shirley Temple was like a like an ambassador in her in her adult years. Like an ambassador for like the world. (laughs) Oh (laughs) shit! I forgot which country, but like she was like an international person of importance. What a crazy family. Oh yeah. Talented. <laughs> Should we mention Matt was kicked out and then joined Mud Honey? Oh, I didn't know that. That's oh, why he's you're kicked here. Out? Yeah. Holy shit. Oh yeah. Well, you know, starting a trend with bass players in the Melvins. Oh, they're bass players the, the, the revolving focus. door, yeah. Yeah, they they burn through as many bass players as spinal tap burns through drummers. Yeah. Holy that's shit. The, that's the joke. <laughs> there was uh <sighs> Kind of getting way ahead. There was a point where I thought, okay, this is going to be the Melvins until someone dies, but it didn't happen. All right. Uh, hold on. Uh. Overall, more lo fi. I thought the production in this one was significantly better. The mix or... The oh, yeah. No, it's better for sure. Oh, this yeah. one's always like been a little bit more darker and like not as bright as the first album. I don't I love, know. I love the production. I love the I way like it. I like it. I'm not knocking yeah. it. I'm just saying it, it feels a lot different than the one before. It. Way different. His vocals here sound amazing too. Love, love, love the way that it's mixed with that kind of studio reverb. Also, he's doing buzz stuff now. Yeah. Well, this is kind of like how we now know him to sound. Yep. Yeah, the gluey felt like the prototype. This isn't, like, their final form, but it's really fucking good. This song is so fucking good. Going back to this, after not hearing it for many years, um, I was kind of surprised that um, how much the guitar playing changed. Like oh, he's yeah. doing weird chords and stuff that you don't hear him doing on the on the first album. Yeah. Um, and I think maybe the first two albums get kind of lumped together as being kind of similar. Yeah. But I don't know. I think that less and less they're similar, but not not nearly as much as I think they're made out to be. What's it? Um, what's it? I think it's because they. Did they re-release this and attach? Yeah, they did. The first, so that's probably that's why how did. I first heard it. Too. Yeah, and that actually prevented me from appreciating the first album because it just sounded kind of like right. The album never ended. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't really distinguish. It's just at a the pile time. of yeah. Yeah. songs. So when they uh, re-released it, wait, it wait, like, hold that thought real quick. Uh, do a thing. That the video is being okay. Never mind. And we're good. Keep going. Sorry. So when they re-released it with like demos, I don't know if you guys heard that version. Uh, ye- wait, the first uh, album, Glee Porch Treatment, yeah, with yeah, the demos at yeah. the end. So I just bought that to try to like kind of isolate it from Ozma, mm-hmm. and then that's when I really started to appreciate the first album. Right. But I had to like really separate it from from this one. I but just kind of an aside. One of my favorite album covers ever. I don't know oh, why. It's really cool. It's it's super nostalgic because I always saw it lying around the house, and that was my. I think that was my first introduction to the Melvins was seeing that album cover, mm-hmm. hearing it in passing. 
I'd always be like, what is that? This, what, what is that? I don't understand. Wizard of Oz? She wasn't in the movie. What is, what is <laughs> but Oh, there's books. <laughs> oh, yeah. But yeah. Uh, so I, 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 almost, I forgot most of this album until going back. Uh, it's fucking really good. I, I don't think it's as, uh, it has as many highlights as the first album, but I like, just as consistent. I like this one better. You like it better? I, I like this it feels better. more like an Alex album. Yeah. Uh, it's way slower. Not crazy sludge yeah. slow but noticeably slower dude fucking oven right after it's only like a minute 30 but it's yeah. so good that that weird uh drum solo with just vocals and drums oh yeah oh it's like it's it's more of dale taking charge mm -hmm. and just making the drums kind of centered around the rhythm section which is just such a an integral part of everything they do also, I, I think out of all the albums, this might be the one that has my favorite lyrics. Really? Why? Um, <laughs> I don't know. They have kind of like really underrated lyrics, I think. Yeah, um, I kind I kind of get I gave up on Melvin's lyrics a long time ago. They uh, they give me life. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So I mean? forgot what song it was. Um at the end where he's just screaming out Matlock. <laughs> what? <laughs> what where? <laughs> Which song is that? I that's what the Googles. Holy are for. shit! That, I don't care what song. If I hated it, that's my now. It's not my favorite song. It's the one before. That's what notes are for. I, I know. I only wrote down Matlock with exclamation <laughs> points. <laughs> God damn it! Uh, when yeah, and trying to Google it when you type in Melvin's Matlock, it's just a bunch of people named Melvin Matlock <laughs> instead of lyrics. What if I do lyrics? Um, uh. Well, I guess uh, is there a song called Antagonizer on here? Sure. It might be that yeah. or Agoni yeah. Agonizer. Agonizer, sorry. Uh, I like that song. It's that, fucking ugly as shit. Yeah. Really, really like this is not gonna again, much like the last album, like you can't show normal people any of these songs. Like maybe like the the, the kiss cover. Uh oh, that's so it's a fantastic it's so, cover. Yeah, it's yeah. the first in many kiss covers. It's like a minute and a half yeah. of a love theme, but it's called Love Love Thing here. Uh, I mean, the original was already good, but this version is still. Really yeah, fucked. it's also like a nice little break from yeah. the other things going it on. It doesn't feel cartoony either mm. for some reason. I don't know why. It just kind of fits. Like God be your gardener. Fucking amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Creepy smell. Um, not like revolutionary drumming, but I love the way it sounds. And it's this big, big Dale stuff. At that point, uh, that's that song along with Cool Legged. Or legged, uh, those were all like I was hitting a slump. Like, all right, these are all kind of blending in. Really, all kind of samey. Really, I, I turned around for me at some point. Like, I mean, even yeah, a green honey onward. I'm like, all right, I'm back in. Um, and the only other song I kind of don't really like is uh, my my small percent shows most. Uh, it feels like the I feel like the album should have ended with Claude. Mm. It feels more in inconsequential. Uh, but again, it's like it, I like the presentation. And style of this one way more than the first one. Yeah. But just not not the song is not as much. Yeah, I th I think better better songwriting. Uh some things I feel like I could latch on to here. Also, you, oh, you get some full on sludge with that uh, revulsion and we reach. Oh man. Uh it's kind of exhausting because every song's like two minutes, minute thir thirty, except for the opener. And then this is like six minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, still good i mean that's what they named the there's a tribute album and it's called we reach so speaking of of length this is like a 30 minute album it's like perfect <laughs> uh, yeah none of the none of these albums felt exhausting to me exactly and the fact that they, they do all this really exo exhausting shit that bands that would be inspired by them they make long albums. All these bands make long fucking albums. The originators did not. Yes. Yeah. That's my favorite thing about that. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you, you can't really get fatigued or tired of this shit just because it's like, it's there to kick your ass for a little bit and then it's done. I mean, I feel like that's, that's my, all my favorite, like really brutal albums are always short. Cause like mm -hmm. how much can you really take of this thing? That's true. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, we did Slayer who wants to listen to like, an 80 minute Slayer album. Exactly. I'm sure there's people. There's, but. Yeah, but they're mentally ill. So they don't matter. <laughs> but, although we do like Slayer very much. <laughs> but uh, yeah, well, I mean, it's again, like a, not too many super highlights for me, but very consistent. Robert. I'm going back to the lyrics and I'm wondering if maybe I remembered them so much because they're printed. 
Oh, oh maybe it might have been. A lot of the albums they didn't, right? No. Um, yeah, a lot of them they didn't, but um should probably also be mentioned like the packaging. Mm-hmm. Uh even back in the C D era, mm-hmm. there was still they do like these um kind of funny things with the packaging. Almost I kinda wanna say they were like trolls in a way, but there's funny uh, guys. I mean, you hear stories about like how they would kind of torture an audience playing like the same like chord over and over again. <laughs> and that, that that's what became sludge. And now we get yeah. sleep shows where people go for that. Or, yeah. or but they were doing this sun sun, sun, sun yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, um, we didn't really mention that they were doing this in front of like skinhead crowd crowds in the beginning. Oh yeah. So like oh is that they why they moved just... is that why they moved to San Francisco? Uh I think that's why they didn't tour or I mean obviously they tour a lot but there's that story about the first tour and how disastrous that was. Explain. I don't yeah. know the story. Uh, there's like actually a funny animated video on YouTube uh-huh. uh, voiced by Buzz about the first tour uh-huh. or whatever. Everything from like um, the van breaking down mm-hmm. to <laughs> like the promoter or the club or whatever not liking the band's name so he doesn't want to let them play. <laughs> That's it? Just the name? It's a great name! <laughs> by the way, <laughs> yeah. the story behind the name Oh, is this like a uh, a weird like grocery gro- uh, grocery clerk was it a clerk or something I like that was like uh, uh the guy in like the dorms i think you're thinking of the toxic avenger Wait. melvin <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, buzz worked as a clerk okay melvin was disliked by the other employees that's right that's right so they thought it'd be like funny to- just the melvins they would it genius hilarious band name i don't know what like that just tickles me so much god damn but but continue continue oh what was i saying what the tour okay i'm just uh trying to remember um at one point they met uh chris noah selich in phoenix or whatever um but they only like talked to him for like five minutes or whatever mm. <laughs> even though that was like i think apparently a big part of the plan or whatever that he would have a be a place for them to stay oh really but um it all just adds up to like, well, you know, I think it was 86 or 87 where he just comes to the conclusion that, you know, touring for the Melvins in 1986 was not a good idea. Man, that is depressing. Now they're like, they do it all the time. So, yeah, but cool follow up, uh, similar in style, but, but definitely more uh, of what we recognize, I would say, uh, different album, different album. But now we're on to an even differenter album, a very big old influential motherfucker. This is 1991's Bullhead. Got some volume over. There. I am sorry. Shit. All right, start it over. Starting over. <laughs> Now, this this was a song where I was like, I am I am one with the drone yep. and the sludge. Uh huh. It's is, the yeah. same riff for eight minutes. But who gives a shit? It's, it's that good. That good. It's that good. The most influential sludge song ever written, poss- possibly. Yeah. Probably. Probably. Bands are naming themselves after it. Right? Yeah. yeah. Japanese bands. Name good it. band. A good, a good band. Actually, yeah. band. I like that they don't, they have their drone albums. I'm talking about Boris, but yeah. like they don't sound like the Mel. They don't. I'm, it, I was uh, surprised and pleasantly surprised that they weren't just copying the Melvins. Yes. Again, with Dale's fucking crazy style of like, would sound like random hits, but it's just. No, it's just really spaced out. Yeah. Which is harder because every hit you you, you hear every yeah every you hit. can't hide behind anything. Remarkably simple riff too, but oh man, the drum arrangements are so complex. It's crazy. It almost sounds like he's winging it, but like I don't think he's winging it at all. Very what, very written. One thing I will miss is uh, from the the Jared and Cody error. They let Jared do the vocals for this. Really? And like he like turned into a monster, uh-huh. and he like just like not like aggressively like he's gonna hurt, but like shove people and not drinks out of their oh, hand. Wow. And like that's great. This is a great performance. Yeah. 
Okay, I have to say something in regards to this album. Well, what day? Well, and that's what and, we're here and, for. And about, <laughs> and about the Melvins in general. Uh-huh. And that is, I got so much crap for listening to them. Are you serious? So much crap. Really? I, I Fuck be- the world. I Sorry. became an even bigger outsider in school and everything. I got so much. I will say, in high school, I, did, I, I didn't understand it. Like, it felt like anxiety the music because especially a song like boris where like i was so used to fast stuff and i needed like a like breaking point it needs to like escalate into something where this just felt like it was fucking like slowly like poking and i didn't like the way it made me feel and then i i have like a huge back tattoo and the guy who did it loves sludge metal and i think just through like osmosis he 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 tattooed he the love ta- into your body. It, yeah, he tattooed os- osmosis. Yeah, uh, osmosis. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Before we go any further, personal favorite, best. That whoa, yeah. whoa. Okay, well, I was gonna finish what I was saying earlier. Sorry, <laughs> right. no, it's okay. So I feel like, to my memory, that I got the most crap from this album. Really? Yeah, Explain. From, well, everything from the uh, just. The slowness of it. Right. People just had a yeah. problem with it being High slow. school people have problems yeah. with slow music. Yeah, I don't when understand I was listening it. To yeah. it. That's when I... That's why you're uh, psycho, Robert. Uh, <laughs> well, anyway. Um, and actually, you know, revisiting this felt kind of like almost like opening up old wounds and stuff. Uh-huh. Um, listening to certain songs like on certain parts, I'm expecting this voice of ridicule to come back behind my shoulder. Holy shit. And um, I still had to stand by it uh back then and i still feel like i have to stand by it still so personal favorite favorite. man i truly fucking love this album every every song is good every song is good every song and the reason i gave it best is because it it's just so consistent it's there's it has all their styles in one not all in one but like Mm -hmm. it so you obviously we get the the fucking we get boris which is the the greatest sludge thing ever written and then we have obviously stuff like it's shoved, which is more punky, and then Zodiac, which is fast and grungy. Oh, which man. Nirvana ripped off, right? Did they for it's negative shoved. creep? <laughs> no, <laughs> for <laughs> Milk It. Milk It. It's shoved the baseline. Put it on. I'm present memory, so I can hate Kurt Cobain again. <sighs> you loved Kurt Cobain. I do. I what do. Are you, I do. What are you oh, there's gonna about? be some funny Kurt Cobain stuff coming up. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. I yeah, I hear it now. Yeah, I hear it already. Yep, yeah, you're right. All right, because of his opinion, I like Milk It better. <laughs> <laughs> I heard Milk It first, so for many years, it just sounded like the copy. Yeah. And I always try to shake that out of my memory, but... Also, while we're playing music, let me do an abrupt change. Okay. Like, because Zodiac, that, I don't know, it's so, um, it's so weird, but such like a killer riff to me. This is my least favorite riff on the album. Really? Yep. Oh my god. Yeah, not even kidding. They also would torture audiences with this riff, I think. <laughs> really? Yeah, play yeah. it over and over again. Can't torture me. Play play this shit on loop. What, what saved this song for me is the is the, the second half. When it when it goes all sludgy. Dun, 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 yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh but so yeah, so it has all these different styles. Damn, but, you're going best. I thought you I thought you would love I thought you would love that, that riff. I, I don't love the riff. I, I don't know. What, I just did that for some reason. Despite though, you still picked it as best. I still think it's the best for so many reasons. One, uh, the goddamn pacing of it is brilliant. So mm-hmm. Anaconda is like, you get this eight minute slow motherfucker. Then Anaconda is, it's not fast, but it's faster. So it, it, there's more momentum. And then goddamn ligature is, I can't even, there's no words for how much I love this song. Oh, it's man. the most yeah. brutal sinister evil fucking dark punishing song ever uh that's how i felt about if i had an exorcism so that's funny i My love also- the vocals i think it's the vocals on that yeah. one i love the, I love the <laughs> vocals in general on the whole album yeah they're great like, they're just like really like agonized sounding and like mournful and it's not like i think part of the reason why i got a lot of flack for this is uh he didn't sound like a cool like slacker grunge guy he just sounded like a lot more demented than that. <laughs> I, that's so good, though. He sounds mentally. He sounds like our dead uncle who's mentally ill. <laughs> yeah, like, but I, I never like 
when I was having, when I was younger, like trying to wrap my head around it, I never like had an issue with his vocals. It was just like, I think he's an underrated vocalist. Yeah, for sure. I the whole whole band, everything they do is fucking underrated. Uh, yeah. Speaking of mentally ill, the intro to "If I Had an Exorcism" is like so, especially Buzz. He's doing that weird, almost acapella thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, but of course, I when that that outro, it's like. I don't know if it's my favorite thing that they've ever done, but it's up there. Uh, it's too fucking good. And like, there's just, there's not a moment wasted on here. There's not no, a single moment. No, it's, it's the most consistent. Everything. It, yeah. It, it has so many things that they were good at all, all in a row and it's paced really well. So we, you don't even, yeah, it's over before you know it. Uh, and of course I feel like I keep saying this, but goddamn Dale steals the show everywhere he goes. Yeah. Like these arrangements are so strange. He even gets a drum solo at the end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. By the um, way, I don't really love the song cow that much, but it ends with just such a great drum solo that it's a great, it's a fucking awesome closer. Yeah. I like I, that note they end off and they let that note ring yeah, and then uh-huh. the drums yeah. continue on. It's uh, as, as we've learned, it is hard to close albums and cow is to me, one of the best, like it's great ending tracks. I don't know what it is about Dale's drumming that it, like he could just be playing the beat of the song by himself and it's still engaging. Yeah. Just, he just is a, he's a hard hitting motherfucker. Um, also let me just say like, it's crazy. Like, to open up with Boris and then also on the same fucking album is your blessing. Yeah. Which is like they're similar, but they're different. Yeah. And it's to me, it's like, it'd be like if you got to watch empire strikes back immediately after star star Wars. Yeah. The first one, it's just like, hold on. You didn't want to like stagger these two things. Yeah. You, you get these like two epics. On yeah. Here that, Speaking of that song, I'm, I'm getting some real Wipers vibes from that solo. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, I'm big, sure. Big, big yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, I was getting Wipers vibes from some souls, but I don't think it was actually on this album. Interesting. Um, he's openly admitted that the Wipers were a big influence. Yeah. Um, there's like videos where he's showing how to play Melvin's riffs from Houdini. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, they covered um, Youth of America. Youth of America. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. But like, actually, like, lifting not i don't even think he lifted a riff for the song he's talking about uh-huh. but it was apparently like a big influence on like he was thinking of the wipers when he was right right it, yeah. you could always feel that when someone is just listening to a band and then you hear the song they wrote again well you hear that one also i want to say uh anaconda yeah this was the first time and i did get this vibe from uh, other songs and other albums but this is I feel a more song oriented album where yeah. the f- previous two are riff oriented. Yeah. hundred percent. And Anaconda, I really wonder like what it would be like if somebody took that song and played a completely different arrangement. Cause I still think the melody and everything works as like a nice song. It's a good song. <laughs> good yeah. riff. Like melodically, yeah. like yeah. speaking, like even, even though Buzz losing his fucking mind on there, the vocal end is still really good for it too. And oh, another thing about the, uh, I really love this production. It's not my favorite of all their albums, but it's really, it's still really big and echoey, but it's not like a uh, muddy that I felt like the yeah. first album was. The drums are kind of super dry. That's kind of like the only thing. But I mean, it adds to the, to the overall sound of it. Yeah. But hearing like, say the intro of it's shoved or whatever. Yeah. Sounds a little less powerful to me. It's not powerful. You're right. It's, it's not powerful, but I, what I like about it is that uh, drums sound like an individual instrument here. So it's probably one of the reasons why I feel like Dale stands out so much because there it's not so much a rhythm section as it is he's just another guitar player and you know metaphorically. Mm. Uh yeah, I think uh I think you're kind of like because like these songs live are are fucking powerful. Yeah. Like so e- even uh even the acoustic version of Boris, Boris yeah. kicks so much ass. And it's I've just, never heard like, it. It's there's all over yeah. YouTube. It's really okay. good. It's just like yeah, like that shouldn't work. It's a fuck. It's one riff. Yeah, it's a sludge song. It's eight minutes and it works. Fucking works. Yeah. Uh, he opened his acoustic set with that when I saw. Did he? Well, I guess I have heard it. Then I fucking like I said so many times. I don't even. Uh, also, uh, I mean, I've already mentioned how much I love ligature, but that fucking drum line at the end with the like i can listen to that for like an hour straight yeah. just that just that whole section i literally could not 
listen to this openly in high school. I, I hate the world. Wait, like, so who was giving you shit? Who specifically? I want their names uh, and phone numbers and addresses. Uh, people I went to school with, but also a big one was would be Davey. Our brother, who's now in a mental institution. <laughs> R.I.P. Yeah, turns out I'm oh, the same one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> look, look, I'm telling you, I was right. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, man. I, 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 not only did I love this one the most, because I went back to Melvin's as a teenager, uh, kind of around like late high school age, and this is the one that stuck out to me then, but I still have fond memories of it as a kid. Uh, as I still think it's you it's one of the best entry points for the band uh love it love it and you two do as well and everyone should because it's highly influential and all that bullshit but time to move on we got now we got some more going on fuck this is such a big episode all right follow up 1992's lysol but also self-titled but also untitled i'm such a dumb dumb i forgot to do a timestamp, so i'm just gonna fast forward like 10 minutes because we're not yeah 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 this is because we ain't gonna sit through this one <laughs> no 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 yeah you're just you're, you're there oh there that's it's good enough, right oh no i think it's like 10 it's 10 minutes like yeah. 10 15 minutes of, yeah all right we're, we're scrubbing through it probably shouldn't no there, there we go. go holy shit Oh, this is already pretty deep into the song, right? Either way. Either way. This is a hard... We should explain. There's only one track. Yes. Probably their, it's their what? Te- true Sludge album? Probably. Yeah. It's, uh... There's technically a few songs on here. Six. Yeah. Six, but it is blended as one song, and... It always sounded like uh, four songs to me, but... It, yeah, there's more in there. Than it does really. sound like four songs. Technically six. I would say... True, there's probably like realistically five. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is like Jesus Christ. Like, there's three cover songs on here, and the way they blend them all into this seamless, yeah, cohesive thing is just so impressive. Yeah, and like. I think the first time I saw them live, they were performing this whole album, and I think I had only heard like Houdini and Stoner Witch. Oh, this is this is what you want, <laughs> and this was like mind blowing to yeah. me. I hadn't heard this album, yeah, and they were performing it in its entirety, and I was just fucking like blown away. But so it'll always have like a a special place in my heart. This this is one of the hardest hitting albums I mean the, the production is noticeably fucking gigantic yeah. here, compared to the last one oh this part oh god damn and uh, we got Joe Preston on bass yeah. now I think he was in Earth Joe Preston's been in a lot of things Earth, uh, High on Fire he's this uh, like a staple in the slow metal community you gotta have Joe Preston in your band at one point, otherwise, even a band. Well, oh shit! All right, let's talk. Goddamn. Oh man, yeah, it's so this band. I, I think this is harder, like hardest to, to listen to, and that's why personal favorite. So okay, I, well, I'll let you go. Really, yeah. I really love this. It is very hard. Yes, it's literally, you can't even skip the songs. If it, and the first song is ten minutes. Eight minutes of which is an intro, yeah. pretty much. Just guitar with the occasional boom. And it, something about it just fucking sucks me and hypnotizes me so so brutally. And it has like all these like these really uh ambient chanty vocals in the background. That's like those that's only vocals in the whole 10 minute song. It it creates this really doomy sludgy vibe that I've never heard uh in a way that I never heard from another band that affects me the same way as, mm. as hung bunny. So that alone, I was like, okay, this is the, one of the most hard hitting, powerful moving things ever. And then it goes into Roman Dogbird, which we were just hearing, which is like Boris, but hits even harder uh, in terms of like, it's the, that same style of sludge where it's, there's more happening than <laughs> hung bunny. And uh, the, the vocals are a little more 
pronounced. I remember like sitting there being like, she wants my cannonball. What the fuck? Do- <laughs> <laughs> I don't fucking care. It's stupid. But uh, I would I would have given this would have been a shoe in for best for me. But there's three there's three covers and it's that's half the album. And I, I just can't. But the covers feel like they feel like Melvin sub- songs, though. A substantial part. And that, along with a couple of other reasons, is why I have to give this least favorite. Oh! Yeah. No! That's insane. That's fucking. That's fucking insane. Because oh, could you? I know what's I coming. I know what's gonna happen later, and that's fucking insane to me. Oh my god! Oh, you, it's so good though. That's the only reason you get to come back because you have these fucking. Jesus Christ. It's like he's trying to fucking break us. He is. Like, okay, I just want to say all my picks for this band uh surprised even myself. <laughs> it's not what I would have thought. Oh yeah, you know, I listened to this band for so long. I like this one, this one, this one. Yeah. Uh you know, walking back after revisiting mm-hmm. it. Um this is a good album. I'm not yeah. it's like I just have to pick a least fear because right. I have to. Yeah. And for me, do you know what's coming up in two <laughs> albums, though? Oh, oh I know. Uh, Jesus God, yeah. Christ. <laughs> I know very well. This is fucking why I'm all over again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought it wasn't going to be for sure. No, I, I, I fucking knew. I knew you were going to do something stupid. <laughs> and you're going to do something stupid the next time. You're so I guess I might as well not even explain like why I kind of went with no, this no, one. No, no, no. Please do. do please yeah. do. Uh, it was yeah, it was between this and another album for least favorite. At least, so at least you have that to look forward to. Okay. Oh my goodness! I don't think that's gonna like make things any better, but <laughs> I can't imagine it would. But um, this was more important for me back in the day to discover than yeah. listening to it now. I think it's one of their best albums in concept, but in actual, I don't know, practice is that yeah. the word. Actually, hearing it, I just rarely feel like listening to it. Just sitting through it. Yeah, and one of my biggest pet peeves of any group is when they put everything on one track. Uh, who else does that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. He's like, dope smoker, dope smoker, dope Actually, smoker, well, and dope smoker. That, that's, that's one you know song, what? though, right? <laughs> that is what yeah. One band pulled it off, I think. Who did? Uh, and it's like, from the beginning to the end, you, you just have to listen to it, the whole thing. With this, I kind of uh, lose track because of the covers. I mean... I understand. I, yeah. <sighs> it's my but favorite but Boris, I Boris the first Boris album is like where it's all oh. I think it's two tracks but the two the those, other tracks those is- first Boris albums are like drone droney this fucking they they're similar to this in in some ways but to me I think the covers are so charming and like I said they do such a masterful job of making them Melvin songs like like I, I would not have like gone back and listened to Alice Cooper if I really if like I thought I was done. I thought he was this like a schlocky like oh, not that not those first no, uh, no, no, four no. albums. And yeah. I, I learned that because yeah. of because of this and like it's such a fucking good song and um I I so I feel like s- sacrifice. So that's what I was gonna say, oh, man. So out of the three covers, there's. That's uh, the better one. Sacrifice is the better. Unquestionably, I feel like Sacrifice is the only one that's a that feels like a Melvin song because it was a flipper song. Mm-hmm. Uh, they slowed it way the fuck down. They Melvins it up, but uh, and also Second Coming, it's it's only the outro to the song Second Coming. Yeah, uh, and it feels more like an intro to to, to Ballad of the Ballad, Effort, Yeah, more so than a separate song. So I feel like those kind of it's one big Alice Cooper cover. Yeah. But it's still kind of an essential album. I mean, even though I pick it for least favorite, right. it's it still, is. it's got um, hung bunny, which is one of the, one of their best songs, I think. Yeah. But it works <clears throat> as a closer more than like listening to it separately on your own. I think. What, what do you mean? The last the, song. Oh, uh, with I mean, teeth? With, it's teeth? just a nice way. Oh, it's with hung bunny is the first. Uh, one, yeah. Sorry. The opening. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With teeth, with teeth. What bothers me about it? Cause it's a fucking awesome song. It's just so ridiculously short and mm. it's after three consecutive covers like yeah. it just it's yeah you miss it if yeah. it was switched the other way around yeah i probably rate this higher if that if it, that came after after roman dogbird i would uh i might actually give it best because it's it just feels so cover heavy and like i, I don't really love the battle of dwight Fire cover it's a it's fine so i mean i love the song and it's a good cover but I, it feels so much like the original to me just with buzz doing his thing 
That was that was the other thing that like got me was like I thought they like Melvin stood up and I went and listened to the original and I was like, holy shit, it's really not that not that different. Uh, yeah. Uh so I kind of want to focus on the good about this, even though I picked it for least right. favorite. There's some funny stories like connected to this, like with the name Lysol. Yeah, that's right. It was originally called Lysol for like a month before they got yeah, they had but- all this stuff printed out and um I think the company Lysol didn't want them to use the name and sent somebody undercover. Really? Yeah. 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 Someone at the record label didn't realize it was like trademarked or copyright. So they got the go ahead and then, yeah. They just... The guy showed up undercover and he just started asking questions or whatever to somebody at the label, uh-huh. I think. And then I think. I don't know, it got revealed that he was from Lysol or whatever. He took off a mask, a Scooby-Doo? Yeah, something like that. That's what it sounds like. Oh, yeah. he posed as an interviewer for a magazine. What a little shithead. Yeah. <laughs> and like, um, a covert Lysol agent? Yeah. And Crazy. the funny thing about it is like, Buzz was just like, why they sent somebody undercover? They just send said, hey, cease, hey, don't, send, send, <laughs> just ask, don't you yeah. <laughs> No, they they, they were, went through all that trouble. <laughs> they were they were gonna get them incriminated on tape. Holy shit! And Hi, so, I'm from Young Teen Punk Rock Magazine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Jesus. So, so they had to cover up the the word Lysol on all the albums, uh-huh. and like fans knew about it and were like, I think it was either marker or tape, and were were Just, removing it, uh-huh. kind of like a Beatles butcher cover thing, and um. So they had to make it harder to remove. So you couldn't oh. remove it without ruining the album. Mm. I think that's about it. And then, yeah. then it, yeah. So now it's just self-titled everywhere or untitled in some places. Well, I, I think they released it under Lice All. What that, now? <laughs> Lice All. Lice that's, All. Yeah, that's the version I have on vinyl. Oh my god, Lice All. L i c e dash a l l. Yep. Oh man. Yeah, that's what it says on the uh, version that I have that comes packaged with eggnog, which we'll get into in oh, yeah. a different episode. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, <clears throat> yeah, this one, uh, I remember, honestly, I remember my first experience with this. I was very, very young. I was way too young. And I borrowed it for some reason from you. And I don't even know what, what could have gone through your head when I asked about it. Like, all right, fucking all right. And... I didn't realize that everything was on one track. So I was like, there's only one song. And I was like, well, I guess I'll just play it. And obviously there's 10 minutes of drone and one, one note or not one note, but it's, you know, just solo guitar. Didn't like it. Didn't like it. No, it was not for no, children's ears. It's it, was, not. it was absolutely not. How old were you again? Uh, I would say nine, nine or 10, 10, the latest. Uh, but with this perspective, this one just kicks the most ass. Like I, I've Roman Dogbird just it's like life changing, that kind of that style mm-hmm. and, and the way it's produced and how satisfying and, and big it, it feels. Like out of everything from this entire era, I feel like nothing hits harder than this album. Like j- it's just produced. Yeah, I would a, say that's fair, yeah. It's yeah. such a special sounding album. Yeah. Uh, it's part of why I don't feel the length on it. Because yeah. everything feels so good. By the way, it's only 30 minutes, which is like again, it's one of the it's shortest not, albums. Yeah, it's, yeah, you're not listening to like the fucking new tool album is one yeah. track. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. That'd be cruel. Uh, one of my favorite album covers though. Oh, it's a great album cover. Great yeah. album cover. Yeah. Uh, it's fucking, I moved on from the wiki page. It's like some native American on a, on a, on a horse. Yeah. It's some appeal to the great spirit or something like that. Uh, it's copied from a statue. Yeah, oh, yeah, by Cyrus Edwin Dallin, Appeal to the Great Spirit. Yes. Beautiful. Uh, the Beach Boys also used it. They did? Yeah. Yes. Oh, for wow. The, for the record label, right? Uh, Brother Records? Really? Uh, no, on their second live album. Oh, that was Beach the Boys. Beach Boys. That was the concert. Beach Boys. Who yeah. was? I forgot who Brother Records was. Hmm. Uh oh, on the logo for Brother Records. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I watch. Oh, yeah, that was Beach Boys. Cause yeah, Robert. Yeah, that's why Robert's here. Cause he fucking he knows his Beach Boys. <laughs> he will say some slanderous shit, but he knows. <laughs> but I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <you're> not. <laughs> I will come to you for historical facts. <laughs> Your opinion means nothing to me. Uh, really wish you were more originals on here, otherwise, but. My personal favorite, Robert Lee's favorite, but that's because of the reason. Because I have to. Because he, he's, he's a fucking maniac. He's a maniac, <laughs> maniac. But 
Now we're on to their biggest album, probably selling big, biggest selling album ever. Uh, I think, at least I think so. Yeah. Uh, big things happen in the, in the life of the Melvins for this one. Grunge happens. Grunge definitely yes. happens. Nirvana happens. Yeah. So this is 1993's Houdini. Yeah, those drums. Those drums are life changing. And this is the song that made me give up on lyrics. I was like, I don't care. Like, they don't mean shit in this band. Well, th- they ha- actually have a part of it at least printed in the booklet, the CD booklet. Yeah, and I'm just like, this. I'm like, is there some sort of hidden meeting? No, it's just. And actually. I um, guess Buzz knows. Like, Buzz knows. That's. This song is so well written and arranged. Very first Melvin song I ever heard. Oh, it's so dang. Because it was the first Melvin CD I ever bought. Yep. I had no clue about the Kirk Cobain connection. Really? No clue. How did you, why did you even? I had no direction on where to start with this band. Yeah. Except I just kept reading about them. The name kept popping up. Yeah. It was kind of like an elephant in the room. Okay, like, what's this Melvin's band all yeah. about? Went to the local Tower Records. They only had two CDs there. Uh, Houdini and Honky. Oh. And um, I was just looking at the cover and the titles, and I was just there like, is? well, I'm just going to go with Houdini. Yeah, it's a good you, cover. You, you better cover. Yeah, you picked right. Yeah, and uh, nevertheless, I was not ready for this. Yeah. No, uh, f- yeah, again, few people are. Yeah. Um, I really struggled to find the connection. Like, these guys are a grunge band. How do they fit in? Like, they don't sound like Nirvana or Soundgarden or... Um, I was like, well, this is like metal, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, technically, in a way. Yeah. Which is weird because like metalheads don't really like accept them. Ridiculous. No. And um, one of the things that we haven't really touched on is the sense of humor that they have. Yeah. And um, I, I didn't pick up on that right away. So I was kind of like um, a little scared by it. Like. It was just kind of threw me for a loop. And like the lyrics, what are these words? Is this some other like, is this like an incantation or something? And you look on the back and it looks all occult or whatever, yeah. kind of like, like vampires or whatever. And, uh, but it's like two kids on the cover with like a two headed yeah. dog. Yeah. yeah. I like a uh, great cover. Music critic Jonathan Gold called the lyrics Beef Hardy in. And I'm like, that is Beef Hardy. That is a cool word and appropriate. Yeah, I think it was maybe David Yao who told uh, King Bozo, whenever you can't think of what to write for a song, think of what would Beefheart say. <laughs> really? <laughs> say some crazy shit about his ice cream melting on his old lady half past ten or something. Yes. <laughs> As we all should. That's the only thing it's easy. <laughs> so easy. That- uh, yeah, so I, yeah, his first Melvin's album, and obviously mine as well, way back when I was a child. These these songs go so far back into Probably, my early yeah. childhood that I, I couldn't, couldn't even. Yeah, it, it's so early. Uh, very, very, very strong nostalgic connection to all these. Uh, and I don't think it's a perfect album, but boy, is it real good. No, I, um, I remember I'll... it being kind of weaker on the second half, but this time around, I thought, oh, wait, this album's actually better than I remember it. It's real the, good. Se- the second half has some like. I don't want to call them sleepers, but it has some some nice things on it. Yeah, um, songs that I I never really gave uh, enough credit, like uh, Copachi. Oh, dude, yeah. that yeah, that is like that's the Melvins of Melvin songs. Yeah. I think there's stuff on here you don't really hear them do too much, like elsewhere, like uh, Pearl Bomb and yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's like, like a drum like machine, a typewriter on there, right? kind of drum yeah. thing, but it's all it's a bass, right? It's just a I'm not, sure what, I'm not sure what I'm not sure what it is. It always sounded like a weird piano to me, but I think it's a bass line. Oh, wait, you mean the, the beat or the... The... the Or the, the melody, actual melody. It's the yeah. riff itself. Oh, I think it's a bass. It's a bass, right? I feel, I feel like it's a bass and a guitar, but the guitar is like clean and really... You know, put it on a little bit. Because that's, oh, that's an underrated right. song. I will say, I feel like the first half of this album is very accessible. Uh, it per- is. Pearl Bomb? Yeah. Okay. And then it takes like a left turn around, like Hag me. Oh yeah, it sure does. <laughs> All right, <laughs> there's a song. There is a song. Ultimately, this 
this is the weakest part of the song though, just because you want Dale instead of this. That's it's like the yeah, it's like the main yeah rhythm. Should I just fast forward it? No, oh, there it is. I even like the hiss that comes in with it. Yeah. I the yeah the. I think it's guitar and bass. Guitar is just cleaning in a little bit lower. Yeah, I was surprised to find out all the bass playing is Buzz and Dale. Yeah, yeah. Well, right, Laurie was out, I think, at this point. She's credited. Yeah, she's credited, but but yeah. the bass playing is all Buzz and Dale. And uh, Kurt Cobain was supposed to be the producer, oh, but got fired. Yeah, there was like a lot of drama. Yes, he was. Yeah, Buzz has said he had no involvement. He was whacked out on drugs. Uh, some authors said Cobain was asleep through all the sessions. <laughs> so depressing. This was he like, got him to leave the deal. <laughs> he got him the deal, and then he's like, "I'm taking a nap." <laughs> put, put me down as co-producer. Did somebody like, mentioned this is their major label debut. No, no, but no. It yes, is. But it yes, is. They, yeah, yeah. They got signed to Atlantic because Cobain. Because the like, Rolling Stones and Aretha Franklin are on there. Was oh, is that why they? Well, picked? I've heard him say that before. It's like we belong in the same label as them. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> um, backtracking a little bit. I feel like Hooch is more primitive, but Night Goat. I'm like, oh man, uh, it, that that bass tone. amazing. Writing. I don't even know how you recreate I'm, that bass. Amazing tone. writing on that coat. Yeah, so fuzzy, so fucking big, uh, and one of the best build ups. Like a simple thing that always stuck with me for my entire life is that that opening riff plays seven times before the drums come in. Yeah. Seven times, which is like, how many times do you want to do it? I don't know. Seven. seven. It's like. Little shit like that that you just it's not a big deal. It's not a big thing to make it a, a, a you know an odd number. It doesn't make it sound overly complicated. It's just different enough to keep you guessing. I remember uh, a friend learning some of these songs and saying it's not that they always write in odd time signatures as much as they have odd phrasing. Yeah. So yeah, the arrangements are very strange. Strange, str- strangements or strange, that's stupid. Uh, but also, uh, this is like the most diverse thing that they put out by far up to this point. Uh, because now you got Lizzie, the first quiet song mm-hmm. that they've done um, until now. Uh, it's really claustrophobic, kind of pretty. Not the chorus, the- I don't like the chorus when it gets loud. That's when it kind of kind of loses it for me. But the rest of it, it's really cool, really cool. I, I like the outro and all that. Mm-hmm. That's I- pretty different for them i guess i don't want to say it's his best vocal performance ever but i'm gonna say going blind is one of buzz's best vocal performances it's I, my, yeah go ahead i love his voice i it's one of my favorite covers i think ever yeah I, I like the original the you know kiss going blind uh but this version obviously i heard first the, sle- something to, the sleaziest song <laughs> sleazy shit i'm 93 you're 16 what's, what's wrong with that <laughs> i'm 93 you're 16 and uh dude, but this one just hits so much harder than the original and it's it just got a charm to it and it's a good song it's a well-written song to begin with uh i don't know why it, it like it, it again doesn't stick out as odd or out of place no no uh, the going back to like what i said on nice hall where they can just do cover songs and make them melvin songs yeah and i uh, we have to talk about it we have to talk about honey bucket at some point it's so weird yeah. like on uh, oh also i forgot lysol not streaming on spotify is on apple music really because i was gonna add the whole thing to the playlist so was i yeah that would have been a i mean it's already well, long. you'd have no choice <laughs> yeah oh man um so yeah that's a bummer God backtracking a little bit yeah. but yeah it's so weird like on uh, i don't know about Apple Music, but Spotify Honey Bucket is like their top song. And it's a fucking amazing song. A, yeah. But this is um, a band filled with amazing songs. And it it's is. Just, it's one of the most famous songs. Yeah. Period. I, I think I remember seeing it like ye- years ago. It was like it was a, a Buzz was on Red Eye or something. And uh, he was like, uh, is it true that? Honey Bucket's the best metal song ever written. He's like, I don't... F- yeah. <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a good intro to the b- band because it's kind of fast. It doesn't have these big drawn-out things. Yeah. It's, it's, it's it kicks to the point. so hard that yeah. you can't help but like get into it. Really. Yeah. There's nothing... like If you like metal and don't like that song, I can't even look you in the face. It just doesn't make any... Because it doesn't compute. It So it has this intro that's like this, you know, speedy, crazy, really, really hooky. 
which kicks way more ass than I can explain. And then, then it slows down just a tad, mm. half time, still driving, still kicks more. And it, it's like, it's two different complete personalities in one song that just flows in a way that I, I don't think uh, it would on paper. Like you write down what the song is on paper. You don't, it, it doesn't register as like, oh, this is the, a perfectly written song. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. But some, it's like one of the, it's the kind of the best metal song ever written. Honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you don't like Melvin's, you, I'd still think there's a chance you'd probably like Honey Bucket. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, That's you, how, yeah. Yeah. You could mix that in with Even other Davey things. likes that one. <laughs> he has just bad taste. <laughs> Come on, man. You listen to Stone Temple Pines and not the Melvin's. Go fuck yourself. Uh, sorry, you're crazy now, but. Uh, where you going tomorrow? And I say, and I be me. Yeah. Sorry. Got to get some yarls. Also, I think that's probably why, like, people, th- Melvin's never su- succumbed to the yarling. No, no. They no. could have easily, easily. I'll have Buzz could have easily. Even on Stoner Witch, they could have, but. That's true. Yeah. Uh. Well, they that did. probably would have been the optimal time to try to do it. Maybe uh, some yarls with not on there. Oh, um, also, Skype up is another wacky one that I. It's like supposedly it's like Melvin's doing funk. Yeah, and then they're for video game nerds on the video game Super Meat Boy. There's a level called Skype up. That's right. I yep. remember that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, supposedly, uh, well, at least in the credits and the CD booklet, uh, Kurt Cobain's playing guitar. On that really. One. And I mean, if you think about it, the tone it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, put, like, put it on real quick. That guitar tone really does make a lot of sense. On the Wikipedia, uh, I don't know what to trust, but uh, it's like it's like a very exaggerated Nirvana tone. This could have been on Incesticide. Oh yeah. So good. This is a really charming song. I don't know why I, I shouldn't like it as much as I do. It's impossible not to like it. <laughs> it's like a like a twisted game show like come on down yeah. oh, music. It also explains why there's so little guitar there if uh, it is Kurt on there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> motherfucker was passed out half the song. Uh so I do think this is a very uh Inconsistent record for the most part, though. Imagine, after, imagine after it, me. if uh, Spread Eagle Beagle was just like plopped somewhere in the middle. of. <laughs> so that's one problem I have is Spread Eagle Beagle. Also, before Set Me Straight is also goofy. And I don't like I don't like it at all. I like it. I actually like Set Me Straight. After all these years hearing it, it's like, yeah, yeah, it's still like <laughs> super good. It wasn't, it's like pop metal. It is like, yeah, but that's the only, that's, that's an example. Like, yeah, going blind fits right in, but that one I felt like stuck out like a motherfucker. Mm. Like, this is odd, which is strange considering we just put on Sky Pop and that one's weird. But Spread Eagle Beagle is 10 minutes of scary noises. It, it does is, nothing. I like it. It's like, God a, damn it, of, of course you do. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's like, I like it even more now. Uh, it's no, like a repetitive man. drum solo without any flair or anything. It's just like these sh- straight ahead. Th- that's why it was the most baffling thing of all when I first heard this. Yeah, it makes it was, was kind of like the best way to close this out. What's the best way to close this experience out? Ten Make everyone mad at you for uh, 10 minutes. I was like, why? That's there my is, thought exactly. Why? There is a worse closer, though. There is always a worse closer with a band who's released 25 yeah, albums, uh, 30 albums. There is a worse closer. So. I think uh, I I was telling uh, one of my friends about the Melvins, and the next thing I know, he's kind of like, I didn't tell him which albums, as far as I remember, but he's posting clips of the album on like Instagram or whatever, and his stories. And the one thing he posted was Spread Eagle Beagle. I don't, <laughs> Somebody else out there likes it. That's yeah. insane. That's so insane. Didn't hold on, Professor Hammer, didn't they like re record this or do it, put it on a live album or something like ridiculous? No, 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 no. They did the whole album live. That's right. And I saw them do it live. And they still oh. played this song. Wait, so I've seen them three times actually. Oh, with Buzz Solo once. <laughs> I forgot about that. So they played all of Houdini and then what did they do for this? What did they do for that song? They did like kind of like a drum solo. I think they still had the big business lineup, so yeah. it actually was two drums. That sounds like it would have been good. Yeah. <laughs> like actually fun to watch. Um, I, w- I would just watch Dale and Cody play drums with no... Oh, yeah, for uh, sure. For sure. No that other actually- instruments. 
Yeah, it was when they played with uh, Mud Honey and I think Flipper opened as a surprise. Oh, that's delightful. Yeah. That, was, that was when uh, Chris was on bass, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. What a crazy small circle world type thing. Well, uh, we're, Flipper's underrated too. We need to cover them at some point. Well, we're talking about fun live stories. Um, one time I went to see them and the opening band pulled out. So they opened for themselves. What? Like they did two sets? Yeah. That's, that's Were they awesome. different sets? No. <laughs> <Same> set. <laughs> they, did, they did the same set. They twice. did the first three songs or first four songs and they stopped and then they came out. That's fucking did it again. hilarious. Yeah. That's <laughs> where was this at? This was at the Echo Plex. Okay. Yeah. Holy shit. Oh my God. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. It, it does. Seem- I mean, this is like the entry point for m- or one yeah. one entry point. It's a good entry point. It's got some of the absolute best songs, unquestionably. But as a whole album, as a full thing, I think it's inconsistent in it, and it, it doesn't work. It's good. It's great, but it's not not one of their best. That's eh, one of their best. But like you know, kind of is. Uh, it it is, is it's one of their best sounding ones too. I think the drums yeah. just like. Drums do sound that really drum good. Intro, this, that, way. this, yeah, this was one of the, I almost gave it best. This because it's like sometimes albums are just so gigantic. I'm like, who am I? Yeah, a man with an opinion, Alex. Yeah, yeah. It's gotta be of, honest. Kind of a good introduction, but maybe not the best for a little like grunge kid or whatever. Yeah, it's a good introduction, but uh, uh again, yeah, it's, it's like, for me, like apparently it was the right one. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, it's their biggest album. It's I don't know, he can't go. Can't go wrong. Man. You can't go wrong with a 10 minute dicking around fucking thing that you it's, end your album. It's, like, it's tacked <laughs> on at the fucking end. Exactly. And there's albums where they end with great songs. We talk about like they're really good at ending albums. Just <laughs> like, wait. I got, cow. I got something worse than spready. Oh, baby. boy. Come All right. Uh, but one last thing. I never noticed until now that the intro to Hooch is cut off. What? The, the drum. It's like it's like in the middle. He's doing he's like in the middle of a fill. I didn't. I I didn't notice until and I and I thought for a second I was like did did I not play it and then I started listening to every version I was like they're all put on just that well we heard it yeah, but yeah, yeah. put just that just that first again listen for much, the begin for him hitting the the first drum much like how I got to see them perform two songs okay if the volume's good and everything yeah see that's not like a leg or nope nope hold on oh yeah yeah, yeah. right in the middle of a fill. I never noticed that until so good. I never noticed. Oh, that's yeah. messed up. <laughs> and that's oh. why it's the worst album. He fucked up. He didn't record oh, the full. Oh, they, d- they done me- must up. Oh, uh, shit. So now they're still. No, 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 no. This is a. Uh, well, they wanted to. They didn't break their contract per se, but they this is not on Atlantic. It's a bit of a, a legendary amrap. Amphetamine reptile, which we've talked about their bands in the past. Uh so this is, uh, I guess, coin under the name uh, Slevim or something. Or, or Snip, Prick, Snivellum. if you want to be. Well, the, it, no, the, 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 the name it was credited. No, yeah, yeah. Melvin's yeah. backwards. It was Melvin's yeah. backwards, so they wouldn't get in trouble. But this is 1994's Prick. Also, I'm playing one of the few things that re- resembles a song. Yeah. So this is kind of misleading. Which 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 one is this? This is Ricketts. It's Ricketts. Okay. Not entirely misleading. Some people will say this album was nothing but noise, but that's not true. It's I'm one of those people, and, and it is noise. true. It's not nothing but. Bo- bo- I not actually listen but- to noise music, and this is like a pretty strong album that should be like canonical in noise albums. So. It feels more like one big ass sound collage. Mm-hmm. Than, it doesn't. I don't. Really, I don't feel like, feel like noise. I feel like no. it's, it's more like, no. a, like an experimental sound collage. Noise the, groups will do stuff like this. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like funny, like I guess collage stuff. And this is song-ish. It's not really a riff. <laughs> it's just. Yeah. That's probably the buzz box. Uh, he had a guitar pedal named after him. Really? This, yeah. As he should. As he is it good? I mean, I can't I've like, never. It's it's one of the rarest guitar pedals really? out there. Uh, if you find it, you pay big money for it. Holy uh, shit. Yeah, called the the Buzzbox. 
by DOD. Oh, right. did the grunge pedal. And all oh, that I forgot about the grunge pedal. Yeah. Holy shit. So this is during that time. Uh-huh. And um, on the Eggnog EP, which isn't going to be a part of this episode, right. he had a very distinct guitar tone from an yeah. old uh, octave fuzz pedal mm-hmm. called the Blue Box. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you had one of those. Yeah. I do have one of those. And when I play it, it sounds nothing like him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I mess with it as well. Uh, worst, least favorite. Worst, least favorite. But, e- I easy. Thought- I, I think this is another album. I No, for sure I hadn't heard this, yeah. and I thought I was going to have some Sophie's choices to make. No. And then I listened to this, and I was like, clear. thank you. Very clear. Thank you. I don't so, have to. Yeah. I, I never heard it either, but I knew it was bad, and I, I knew there's a reason it didn't get talked about that much. <laughs> and I was like, I, I, I'm, like I'm, gonna, I'm going in with, like, you know. But Please I could, tell me at least okay. you have some interesting stories about this. No. Because this is all, man. Okay. I, please, well, please. Yeah. Like, well, uh, I will say I saw Buzz called it noise crap, complete well, and utter even, nonsense. Yeah, they had a no total crap. joke, Robert. Yeah, a total no. joke <laughs> that should have got your worst, least favorite. Yeah, but for some reason. Hey, be happy it didn't get anything. <laughs> it's I was it's like, insane. Look it's it. fucking insane. I can't hate on something that makes me laugh this much. Oh, it's not you, a you're perfect. a fucking psychopath that <laughs> okay. this makes you laugh. Okay. Play Chuck, people. No, okay? I, I will not that play is, it. I will not is, play it. That shot its way to the top of my favorite Melvin songs. Really? It's like the mentally challenged cousin of Swans. I I wrote down, he sounds like Michael Jira on that mm, song. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I could hear that. And it's only a minute long. I mean... Find that some bitch. What? What is? Oh, I see it. Oh. <laughs> also, it was this, this song YouTube. So I was like, I'm not gonna fucking play this. Here it's just go. a. It's just a fun little thing that they did in the studio. Also, I don't think anybody's gonna be able to hear this album ever. <laughs> otherwise, I mean, yeah, it's on. It's on YouTube. But yeah. It's not. It's not. It's those vocals. I mean, it's impossible for me not to love this. This is awful. I can, I can, <laughs> I can do like movies that are so bad they're good, but like music that's so bad it's good. Like, I need. <laughs> just screw that's me in more the like uh, what's your name, Jen <laughs> Terry? That's more like so bad it's good. Oh shit! Well, um, okay. They were originally gonna call this album Kurt Cobain. Oh. But then <laughs> Kurt that. Cobain died, and so oh. they changed it because they didn't want it to be mistaken as a tribute album. <gasps> That's hilarious. Yeah. They were they didn't like him at this point, right? I guess not. I mean, they retitled it Prick because Cobain was the prick who died, and therefore made them have to change the album title. That's hilarious and so dark, and I love them so much more now, just based on that. Now <laughs> just, it's the best album. It's fucking... <laughs> Please don't give it best. <laughs> oh God, this is so hard to enjoy. I I listened to this one time. Same. I couldn't I couldn't bear a second listen. Uh, it, it just there's nothing. I, I mean, Punch the Lion is kind of a song. It's got like, well, Larry's like the most song on Le- here. Yeah, Larry. Yeah, that the, is the uh, yeah the. It's leaps and bounds. best song. I would say it's leaps and bounds better than the rest. It's not the i wouldn't call it a great melvin song but compared to everything else on here i think so uh but punch the line i think is out of all the soundcloud stuff i think is my favorite because it has like these you know these church bells along with this driving drum beat and i, I mean a lot of songs here have a bunch of ambient conversation but there that's the only time I, it worked for me mm-hmm. but so it was kind of like reminds me of the bottle surfers yeah, like a, yeah. Maybe locust a, abortion a, a much worse locust abortion. T- a much, much worse. The, the mentally challenged cousin of a locust abortion technician. <laughs> I mean that that album is so brilliant. There, <laughs> and this one is that it, one. This one feels so lazy. Yeah, locust. There's like stuff you can latch onto, or actual funny songs like cunt. Oh, yeah, cunts. Cunt. Or cunts, sorry, whatever. The song where he says cunt a lot. Yeah. Uh, or or the, uh, Omen, the Omen. Cunt, yeah. cunt, funny cunt, one. Cunt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is just... Almost as good as Chuck, people. <laughs> God damn it, Robert. <laughs> this is the, I think it's the first album we've listened to that's out of print, and I like. I get it. Uh, I don't, I I don't think it. people should spend money on this. Well, I didn't, but... <laughs> I, I kind of wish I did back in the day because I would have the CD version of which like Stag went out of print and I have that. The oh, yeah. you still version. have it? I have it. Yeah. Oh, that's I, awesome. I, I remember, well, it's in print now, I believe. Um, 
third man records stepped in and they read yeah yeah well, uh but I, yeah i have a version of stag where it's the the promo not for resale yeah. thing oh i have a ween album that's one that's one of those yeah guess what motherfuckers someone resold it to me. exactly i bought that exactly, yeah that's they resell that shit uh, all the time. i should probably tell my uh melvin cd story how i was even able to hear any of this music to begin yeah um so mom went on one of her many trips to England. Oh yeah, let's not talk about those too much. <laughs> left a, a bank card, you know, for emergencies. Yeah, in case you know we need food or something. Right. And so I told you about Tower Records. They only had Houdini and and uh, Honky. Honky. Yeah. So once I bought Houdini, that left one right. <laughs> CD left. Of course. Around this time, I started finding out more about the band and the earlier albums, just reading online. And. Uh, do you remember, I think it was the Warehouse? Warehouse Music? Yeah. Yeah. So that yeah. was just a hop, skip, and a jump Ooh, down. I remember. Yeah. North, oh, yeah. I went, North of the Tower Records. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Well, they had all kinds of Melvin CDs oh, for some reason. Really? They had like all the Boner Records, you know, the, the solo EPs yeah. and uh, the Atlantic stuff. And um, I was like, well, you know what? I got this bank card. I think I'll... <laughs> Buy a CD. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it just turned into two CDs and it turned into <laughs> three. I got Ozma. I got Bullhead. I got uh, Lysol. I got uh, Stoner Witch. I got the singles. So that's why we were so hungry there in that trip. Were you? No. Wait, wait. <laughs> you might have gone with her. I don't know. No, no chance. Um, <laughs> there no is chance. a chance. No chance. <laughs> um, I promise you there's no chance. <laughs> well, anyway, um, not knowing that, like, you know, every bank account is created differently or ends up differently. Uh -huh. um, I was not checking the balance. Yeah. And apparently I drained the whole account to buy Melvin CDs. Yes. And that was like the the mortal, I was going to say wound, the ultimate betrayal yeah. to mom that she could never, ever forgive me for. Really? I mean. No. Well, we if, were pretty broke. If, yeah. If bring they it were, up. If, bring it up now. She has no memory of it. Th that's how it always is. It's always, <laughs> always every single time. <laughs> and I still have a lot of those CDs. So I mean, if they were new and not used, that was probably like eight, oh. 18, 20 bucks a pop, right? I think their CDs might have been a little bit less. Probably 12, 13 at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Which equivalent to, you know, 17, 18 now. I think maybe the most might have been 15 or something. I don't know. Mm. 1599. I don't know. Depends. But yeah, it's yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's hilarious. What else? Did and I mean? and Prick was not one of those albums is what you're saying. No, but it was there the whole time. It was. I was like, man, I, I heard, I let people's reviews of it kind of like say, well, I don't really need that one. Yeah. Um, and they were right. The just for the collectability factor. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like a big fan. I would like yeah. love to have it. But, and so, Clearly, they weren't going to release this on Atlantic, but do they feel so inclined? Like, we need to get these songs out there, man. We need to. I guess. Like, I, I can't. I, I, well, he said they just did it for the weirdness factor alone. It is pretty fucking weird to do that. You're signed to a major label and like, you know, let's go in the, this alley real quick and record this, this hot steam pile of shit. Arguably Same. their most popular album. They fall hit up with this. Yeah. It, it, uh, it seems like a legal mess, honestly. I'm yeah. I'm sure the people at Atlantic were like, oh, we don't we don't got anything to worry about here. Yeah, it's like he was gonna blow up right? yeah. yeah. Uh, it's I don't know, man. I, I really found this to be too abysmal. And I have not heard really many Melvin's albums that I've felt that way about. <laughs> like, oh my god, I, this might be the worst album they've ever done in their entire career. Like, we have a lot of albums yeah. that we need to cover in future episodes, but this is fucking really bad. I could think Bottom of, of the one. Barrel, yeah, I could think of one that has probably maybe a worse reputation, but I still haven't heard it. Worse oh. reputation. Yeah, yeah. So I'm what, assuming. Or like in the 2000s. We're not, we didn't review it. It's not even. No. Good. Yeah. Can, can you say? Do you want me to? Just say yeah, it. Yeah. We, uh, won't, yeah. we won't talk. I think it's a Colossus of Destiny. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Yes. We'll get there. Yes, we'll you're right. There. You're right. Shit. Yeah. You're right. Oh, no. Oh, no. We have to listen to that. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Which uh, Buzz says is one of their best albums that if you want to understand what the band is about, uh, you got to hear that. Don't one. ever listen to that psychopath. He is, he's trying to, he's misleading us on purpose. He didn't put prick anywhere on his list of essential Melvin's albums. So he is a psycho too. Oh I, man. I love I, tr him, but... I trust him about as much as I trust you. Yeah. Okay. I'll not at all. A couple, <laughs> not <man>. at all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So both Alex and I are, yeah. Worst and least favorite Robert's an anomaly. Well, an if there was a category, I'd put it as funniest album. <laughs> 
Jesus Christ. That matters a lot for me. Uh, I can tell. But we're back to Atlantic. Same year, though. Yes. This is uh, 1994's Stoner Witch. Oh, those firework flams feel so good. Honestly, this song felt so good after hearing so it. Good. <laughs> I was so happy. So fucking good. The drum panning in the song is ridiculous, though. I don't know why it's panned this way. Yeah. Uh, I think it's it's in mono right now, but normally there's like, yeah, they're 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 all extreme left and right. Also, I skipped over that Mark D D Ortum D Ortum. I, I don't. I'm gonna look at the EU Dutrum. Dutrum. The Dutrum. Wait, Mark Dutrum. Yeah, new bass player. Yes, he came on board for Prick, and now he's uh, kind of an interesting addition to a band. I think he produced Ozma, right? Oh, that's maybe. the whole song. And we listen, yes, we listened to the whole song. The whole song. And oh, you know what I completely forgot? Um, I think the cover of Glee Porch Treatments, I think, was done by the Mascara Snake. Really? Uh, like flashbacking to my first appearance here. I, yeah, I have B, no idea who. B, from B part. He, he was involved oh, in the, on the, the, the label that put it out. He was one of, he, I think he's credited as executive producer or something. Holy uh, shit. Um, that's a good cover. It's really creepy. Yeah. yeah. It's very similar to Houdini that with little illustrations of kids. Uh, but also this, best. Are you serious? I, I'm, I can, I can I'm see dead that. serious. Really? I'm dead serious. I like it a lot, but I, I'm surprised. It doesn't get a a fair shake. I think sometimes. Cause yeah. What are, one, it's I, on Atlantic, me, and then I don't know. What do you some, mean it doesn't? It's like oh, people kind of like that, who? That are, who are these people? People that are into the more like underground, the more underground side of. The, when I know, got into the Melvins, it's like this or Houdini. That's your yeah, yeah. This was the second Melvins album I ever heard. But when I first heard this, it's like oh, I get it now. Like it was like the missing piece of the puzzle. And I, I still rate it pretty highly. Um, yeah, it's a good album. Yeah, it's got some weird stuff on it, it too. It does. But it does. That's why I like it. I think like Houdini has like arguably like you know, if you want, it's not even the right like bigger songs. Yeah, yeah. Like m- these like big iconic songs, but like I just I like the diversity on this album. To me, it works better start to finish. It, it is more consistent as a whole. Um, like you get Queen right after. That's one of their best. Yeah, yeah that's that song is fucking unreal. Yeah, yeah. fucking sweet wi- Willy Rollball. Oh, roll bar. Yeah, mouthful. Uh, yeah. it's just fucking like the opposite of Queen, where it's like high energy. Yeah. yeah. Uh. Magic Pig Detective. That's my least favorite song. <laughs> uh, <that's> the, <laughs> the intro. So, it's like, okay, where is this going to go? Like, yeah. you're listening to it, and then it ends, and then it's just another. The last, the last minute of that song is really fucking awesome. Stuff though. like that. I'm not like, into the last minute of it at all. Oh, I just I, don't like the song at all. I yeah. like it. It was those little things like that, probably like with the last track, too. Um, yeah. Weird things like oh, that, Levity. where I just, by the time I got to Stoner Witch, after like trying to understand Houdini, I. Totally appreciated all that yeah. a lot more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because honestly, like stuff that seems again on paper, like what the fuck, like Lividity. I love that song. <laughs> it's just a bass line yeah. for like eight minutes or whatever. They can do that exactly. It's it's still fucking long, but I don't know. It just it again. It just sucks you in. It's hypnotizing. It's it, it works. Uh, yeah, but as you were saying, like not 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 like their most iconic songs in here. And I, again, I think that writing revolve. Is, I think it's been a staple. Has it? For years. Yeah. Yeah. Revolve is, I, that's one where I'm just like, everything's killer. The riffs, the, the toms sound huge on there. It's, it's great. Um, I don't know if it's like a staple, but like road bowl, I would like love to hear that song live more often. Cause I, I think it's one of the better, like quiet, loud, quiet yeah. songs. That That's an interesting one. Cause at the end it has like those military drums and whistles. 
It's like which that's so quirky. Yeah, which I feel like kind of becomes a staple of theirs like later later on that we won't get to to a long for a while, but like they do the military drum shit real yeah. good. Yeah, real good. Uh another favorite of mine, June Bug. June Goddamn. Yeah. Goddamn. June, oh man. I feel like June Bug and Shivel are underrated. Yeah. There's uh, there's so, uh, especially shovels like it's spacey. They don't really do spacey a whole lot. No, a few times, but not that's not that much. That one I, I always feel like it's not the most eventful song, but just the vibe of it really works for me. Yeah. Very uh, very crawly, very yeah. I think I think that's a good good way to describe my feelings about it is the the vibe of this album just really fucking works for me. It's got great production. Yeah. yeah I good. mean as it should it's it's weird like reading like things in in hindsight they're like you know they they kind of knew their time was up at atlantic which wasn't exactly true and they a lot of people are like you know it's pretty experimental like i don't no, think it's experimental not, at all i just think fair, it's no. fucking solid songwriting i thought it was more experimental coming back to it, it was like oh wait yeah they did all this on on that like but it doesn't have a reputation of being like a weird album it doesn't feel like a weird album yeah. just because it came after prick i mean they're they're stretching their their muscle like musical muscles a little bit but it never comes across as like oh they're doing like weird stuff yeah it, it didn't feel especially because you don't get any like baffling moments like uh, like like obviously spread eagle beagle yeah or even fucking skype up or set me straight like where they're just kind of bizarrely bizarrely just this wacky kind of just anomaly song mm-hmm. like novelty songs uh, i kind of feel that way about the uh uh the one i think it's june bug yeah that's kind of like they're in cute, a way cutesy it's, little it's cutesy but it still like, kicks a lot of ass yeah it does. A great song and i love that, that just the fact of like the that clean guitar playing those uh arpeggiated notes over this really part. fucking heavy heavy ass bass mm-hmm. i i melts my melts my my soul also yeah the fact that it's like the opener and june bug the fact that they're like a minute two oh, yeah. minutes Super like short. i just want more of them yeah uh and then yeah so more like quite loud quiet stuff like goose freight train and uh at the stake just brutal love slow, at the stake. a god darkly mon- melodic because i can't think mm-hmm. of another way to explain it but uh it's that's one i think like i wonder you know what it would be like if somebody tried to put a different style behind it i mm-hmm. think it would like translate pretty well interesting oh you mean it's that well written yeah 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 I, I love I love the guitar noises in it too. Those little like weird like like string scrapes or whatever. Uh-huh. They somehow don't sound like string scrapes or whatever. But it's just like ambient kind of like yeah. yeah, it doesn't yeah, it just adds to it. The ambient stuff on here I think is is the most well done they've done up to this point for it sure. Does, it never feels overwhelming. Yeah, it's always very subtle. Uh and there's no uh at least yeah, like before I was thinking more like the ambient stuff was feedback oriented and now it's more production oriented and like little uh, idiosyncrasies with how he's playing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but tight, tight is, is a motherfucker. Uh, Just like that snare drum. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. a fucking quarter off this album. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Still not my favorite though. I, don't I can know. tell. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It just felt just very less un- memorable overall. Un- unenthused. Unenthused. Enjoy it though. Like I, I'll put this on, you know, countless more times. But just yeah, it's I, strong entry, but it's not my. You know, I wasn't I expecting to give this one best. If that's any like, I think I was almost gonna do that. Yeah, yeah, I, I wasn't almost. expecting to, but here I am. And that's why we do this, baby. Yeah. That's why we do this, baby. But Alex is best, uh, and it's, it's all entry point. Especially like this feels like definitely the, the. I don't know. It's it's the most confident sounding of the Atlantic albums, or like. Aren't any earworms, but it is. It's fun. It's impressive. It's a. Uh, it's a whole. It's a whole vibe, as mm. the kids say. Hell yeah! But we got a couple more, and man, we're we're finally getting through it. Couple more, exactly. This feels like a, a marathon. <laughs> Does it? It's, it's not a short episode. I'll tell you that. No, no, no. <laughs> but I'm doing it. Bro. Hell yeah! So this is 1996's stag. One of the best Melvin songs ever. Very cool. 
And that's because Alex is a big old sucker for them sitars. Sitars? <laughs> but, like, they're not in the song. They're after, not. It's, yeah. yeah, it's just this. I think it's Dale playing them, right? I think he wrote it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Dale has more of a hand in the writing than we realize. That is some of the heaviest fucking riffs. It's pretty heavy. Yeah. That's some good bass line. <laughs> yeah, Dale did play the sitar song. The most stoner metal they've ever sounded. Considering they just created sludge. <laughs> yeah. Just waiting for those vocals. Yeah, yeah. God damn. Yeah, that's real solid. God damn. That's some solid shit. Yep. I love, yeah. Um, I love this album this well because it was like out of print and felt like more exotic for a while. And there's this like weird shit like Bar X, the Rock and M I with hate, horns. Hate that song. <laughs> I think out of all the albums, this is the biggest, well, most eclectic yeah. out of this batch that we're doing. Yeah. When, and that's one reason I got to give it best album. I'm not mad at that. Yeah. I'm angry at that. I'm furious I'm glad, at I'm that. Go, uh, <laughs> I surprised you and myself. Now, yeah, now you got me back on your side. Yeah. You son of a bitch. This you one? did it. You did Fucking it. this one? Yeah. There's cool shit. There, there is. But as a whole. No, it's, a, it's, it's, a, a, it's a actually whole. an like, amazing production. I did not even realize it. I thought, oh, it's just a weird, quirky album that I remember from back then. Not their best stuff. But there's a lot of cool stuff going on in this album. There when, is. When Cottonmouth came on, I realized, well, you said it earlier, but I feel like this is the most like butthole surfers album. Not in terms of like it noise. Is. I, I, I could agree with I that. I agree with that as but well. But in the, the way like butthole surfers will like kind of dip their toes in country music and yeah. do some like twisted country music, like that's that's on here. You got something like fucking Skin Horse? It's, yeah. yeah, it's really fucking good. It's yeah. really, Okay. <laughs> I so, love that song, so actually. actually. <laughs> one thing I want to say about the Melvins is that they are so much more than a sludge, metal, yeah. grunge band or yeah. whatever. Yeah. And this is an album where we kind of see more of like, the depth of what this band is capable of. For sure. I See, I get that completely. I don't like their execution of it because it feels so much more like, oh, what do you want to try now? All right, let's try this. You want to try it now? Let's I love, try it. I love it, the it, blaring horn. I, oh, that sounds so good. I hate uh, the I used horns. To like, especially because you get, like, Hyde, which is, like, this, I like, love that. creepy... It, and it's just a, a weird this, one it's a, trans, it's a transition trick I wish it was uh, longer it's that's really good. that's their obla di and this is their white album <laughs> how dare you <laughs> I mean like it's still good I and mean, also, honestly I do like the the poppy stuff like a, like Black Bach like I really I like, like that yeah, shit the, uh, who's doing vocals on that one uh, it's it's Buzz, isn't it? Is that I Buzz? Think, I think Buzz is doing most of the vocals, but it doesn't always it's, sound like himself. Yeah, and yeah. But I think Dale is doing. Um, oh, I forgot the Cotton, the final song. Oh, Cotton Mouth. Cotton Mouth. Yeah, I think that's all Dale. Yeah. Okay. Which yeah. Makes yeah. it even funnier to me for some reason. Yeah, I'm not 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 not, not a fan of Cotton Mouth. Uh, <laughs> I like it. I I like a lot on here. It's not. It's not perfect, but like it's not perfect. But when I listen to it, I'm like, okay, not really feeling this. But before I go too deep into that feeling, a part comes in that's like, oh, wait, yeah, this is good. It yeah. switches it up for me, like just enough to avoid being like one of their worst albums and then elevates it to like the best album <laughs> of this batch. <laughs> or fucking like sterilized. Um, I'm spacing on the Slayer saw. It's like it's the same drums as this, like oh, it was like the Kermit Insane. Yeah, yeah. It's like the it's like a that's Slayer song, but like on mushrooms. That song, it sounds like it was recorded in a tunnel, but it's really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, that's another that's thing. That's the like, one where the vocals are really up front, right? Uh, no, no. Uh, 
I'm gonna play a little. Like bit. the closest they did to like the. I'm thinking g- goggles is the one. goggles. Yeah, yeah and go- I don't like that one at I all. I love goggles. I, I think I've always loved it, but never wanted to admit it. I knew. <laughs> I okay. I knew Robert was gonna like goggles because I was like, this is surreal in the most nightmarish way. Yeah, it, yeah, it is. Yeah. It actually kind of reminds me of like black metal, but like without ticking all the stereotypical boxes. Yeah, of yeah. black metal. I'm not. I'm not gonna throw it. Never okay. mind. We, we've moved on. <laughs> Fucking uh, Buck Owens. Almost a new metal song. I Pretty can, good. <laughs> I can imagine like Mudvayne do, doing that song. That is a weird. Imagine that. I think it's because I've seen Mudvayne live three that's times. That's kind of what Fuck, this. Man, that's, uh, that's you've seen Mudvayne too, more than I've seen the Melvins. Yeah, that's pretty. Funny. Three too many times. The album makes me think of new metal, but without being new metal. It's not, yeah. I mean, it's, it's like right on the cusp of it. The production yeah. for sure. So it just makes me think that this is kind of some overlooked classic from the era that. People should revisit, especially if people are curious about ideas for production. Like, definitely recommend this the, for that. Yeah, it's it feels more like a because like people can say like prick is like the most experimental thing, but like this is the most experimental novels out of this era for sure. Because yeah. every song they're just trying a different thing, which I I like that. But it sounds so much like let's just turn all the knobs up in this one song and then let's turn them all down in this song. That's what it really registers. Like, because you hear like the crazy ass production of goggles, which is like intentionally shitty, which is it, it, when it's done so on purpose, it just, it, it feels like tacky and like it sticks out to me too much. I kind of wish more music was like that. <laughs> <laughs> Holy God, shit. God damn uh, it. Yeah. I've never been dunked on <laughs> so hard in my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't i don't know it had that like exotic feel to it when i was getting into it because it was out of print streaming wasn't a thing and sure i could i could download it but i'm a man who likes his physical medias so mm-hmm. i kind of like cherished it because it was like hard hard to find and it just felt it felt better to me well, part of that experimentation that we're hearing from him is like also really good melodies or whatever. The writing yeah, is actually yeah. very solid here. I yeah. mean, yeah, this is the weird, like, okay, this is our last album on yeah, the land. We're, we're at it. We're out the door. It, yeah. yeah Where did this fucking do weird shit, but not in an offensive not way. Not in a prick way? Yeah. No, they're no. not pricks about it on here. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all, and honestly, it's, oh, by the way, Lacrimosa fucking really great and, and oh yeah the, the sterilized kind of bleeds and yeah yeah it's uh, almost like one song but it, it's kind of fucking ridiculous how good the pop stuff is on you like the fact that they, they have that muscle it's like ah, oh, let's just make a really cookie catchy pop song why the hell not yeah and it really works same with bertha which is another like you know super super accessible but yeah it's, it's like a di- super dichotomizing like oh let's do very accessible and then completely not even a little bit accessible all in one album Fucking works for me. Clearly works for Robert. God damn. Although I might question my life choices on my drive home. You should. You should. <laughs> we'll like, do it. We'll listen to this album though. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> me and Robert like had a good, good bonding experience. <laughs> oh shit. Uh, but now they're done with Atlantic, but we got one more album. This is Robert's best. Uh, it's definitely worth listening. It's fucking very interesting. It's to Melvin's that we don't get to hear too much of uh, pretty much ever. Or from, any artist really right yeah it's it's i mean honestly it's a gem most getting the horse i mean sorry skin horse alone like yeah the, the baby vocals the baby it's like it, and it's still good <laughs> it's not, <laughs> it's stupid it fits fucking Gets ridiculous right here. but it's still such a well-written song yeah. <laughs> such a good song oh, oh shit but yeah let, let's let's uh we got one more finally yes. last one of uh this 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 very fun and jam-packed era this is 1997's honky i did time stamp this one i think i thought this was gonna be another like garbage noise so did i no it is not i love this album so do i this is like i think it's severely underrated severely underrated i'm glad yeah yeah, we're back. We're back. We're back. That's why I'm in the center. You got the two streams. <laughs> Should I break that right now? I know he's going to give it worse. <laughs> no. right. Oh, wait. Did he? No. Oh, yeah. That's what process of elimination, wait. right? Oh, no, no. 
I think that would still be uh, Lysol. You son of a bitch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. I this was in the in the running for it, but the more I listened to it, I was like, no, there's just too many good things going on here. Like too many good. things. First of all, this is fucking beautiful, gorgeous. Um, and this is I don't know how to say her last name. Oh right. Um, uh, K from Babes in Toyland. Coming yeah. up twice in two weeks, Babes in Toyland. Really? What was the first one? Uh, a whole. Oh, that, I, yeah, that's right. Talked about them briefly. That's right. And they have a short discography, so they're coming yeah. up at some point. This is not the Melvins as we knew them, but I, I again, love it. Again, going back to flexing that musical muscle, like yeah. I, I had no fucking idea they could write songs like this. Sam, I never heard this before until until now. And again, the ambient stuff is. Very it's well good, done. yeah. yeah. It, it's like actual music. People say this is their most experimental, but I think that's I still stag. I still, I would say, still stag. Well, as well, prick is really prick fun. is. It's not experimental. It's just a bunch of fucking assholes dicking around. <laughs> I can see why that label gets thrown on here, but to me, the songs are so good. Yeah, that it like transcends experimental so I love that song this was so close to being big personal favorite holy I was, shit I, I, cause I never heard it and I was like what the fuck dude why did I never heard this one? Oh my god no this is like the, the amphetamine reptile album that needs to be like back in print yeah this one is again not streaming which is a fucking crime uh, basically I mean the only song I don't dislike two songs which is like how and grin I uh, even yeah, how I like grin how? Grin's better than it's how. A funny riff. <laughs> yeah. This, or lick or whatever. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, Grin's like craft work meets the birthday party a little bit. It's not amazing, but like how I I really like those like industrial really? metal drums with the noise over it. That's how I feel about uh Lovely Butterfly. L- yeah, that song, that one I was like, this is what prick should have been because it's noise, but it but still a function, yeah, yeah, it functions as a fucking song. That one really it's has a, an industrial vibe to it. Yeah, yeah, it's abrasive for sure, but it, it fucking works. Mambia Sibachi fucking rules. God damn. It was, it was when that song came out, I was like, oh, this is going to be a good, this is a good album. Because that, the opener, oh, yeah. I, I was already like, had the same kind of like, kind of like know. a long intro in a way. Well, yeah. Exactly. Well, I thought like that, int- I guess the intro is kind of an outlier. There's nothing that sounds like the intro again, yeah. but. Oh man, it was not like. Well, you you get stuff that's it's similar in a way, like pitfalls and serving warrants. That's just my favorite. I gorgeous think, on the album. Yeah. Gorgeous. That's the other song I want to say. Well, maybe that could work in another arrangement as well. It's that's the thing. Like th- it's such a weirdly arranged song. It's a, one of the most spaciest songs by far. But uh, like I don't know if it's like halfway or toward the end. You you start getting these little like not music box sounds, but like really small sounds a note here a note there mm-hmm. but they're it, good notes i don't know how else to put that like it's 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 a good progression it's just performing such a fucking weird and kind of creepy uh nice. ar- arrangement yeah <clears throat> um i think kind of going back to those those like random things is harry lounder's walking trick tri- ah stick tree Oh, it's yeah, like yeah. Western music, but in like slow motion, yeah. and you get those like soundscapes and and little noises in there. Very more Coney vibes, but recorded in a tunnel. Yes, yeah. yes, it is very pretty, very melancholy. Yeah, and then this is the album with the worst worst closer than Spread Eagle Beagle because it's twenty five minutes oh, of silence. Yeah. It's not on the YouTube version. It's not on the vinyl version either. It's on the CD version. It's on the CD uh, version. Yeah. It's on the CD version. But not the vinyl version. I, I, think, I think that's, that's a pretty more, fair, fair. I think take. that's worse yeah. than Spread Eagle because it's nothing. It is worse. It's just and yeah, sure. In hindsight, they cut it out. But they did cut it out. And the version I heard, I was like, and obviously, if obviously I did, you could skip it. But if I did just, have that version, I would just turn off the album. <laughs> you could turn it off, Spread Eagle Beagle. Hey, but it still it sounds. <laughs> I have to hear the sounds, Alex. <laughs> but. The song itself in the in the Freak Toast, the Bugs Are Dying is a great fucking song, Dude, though. Yeah, that's like the most high energy song yeah. on here. Yeah. Um it that one is like it's a Melvin song, but with the like slight industrial yeah. on it. Is that the one where the vocals sound like Chris Novoselic? Ah, uh, is it? Let me see. <laughs> oh fucking find out. Modulated Chris. Modulated drunk Chris.
This would be rad to experience this live. Oh, yeah. God damn, this song's good. Fucking Dale, man. Ah, He's the man. He's the fucking man. Just realizing every Melvin song takes forever for vocals. I I never realized it before, but... Fucking yeah! So I don't think they have another song like this. Like yeah, Is that a tambourine. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Why? Why? It yeah. fucking works though. I bet it's a uh, program. It sounds program. I'm gonna fast forward a little. I think it's gonna yeah, not these vocals. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I thought it was coming up. No. I fast forwarded and it sounds the same. You fast forwarded too, too far, I think. Whatever. No, we're not getting it. We're not getting it. We're not <laughs> getting it. It's that part with the high hat. <laughs> oh, shit. Either way, it's a fucking great song. A great song, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, was not expecting. Yeah. Oh, we, we want you got to talk about uh, Air Breather Deep in the Arms of Morpheus. It's like their epic, epic. It was like 14 minutes. I didn't like it. You, but there's so many things, Alex. There's there so are things a lot of li- things. A lot of things, things to like on it. It's like you could pick one part that you like because it's more like multiple. The end, the end part was. End part's really yeah. good. End part's really good. Uh, it, it does take a little, little bit to start up. It does. But a lot of the songs take a little bit to start up. Sure. And as a fan of Lysol, you think I'd be on board for something like that. It is not Sludge, though. This is way more space than yes. Sludge. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess uh, this is their spaciest then. Oh, this 100%. is Yeah. This is like an outlier, but yeah. like, what a what a nice treat, I think. Yeah. I was not expecting it just to be that, that strong. And I was, it's all, yeah, it's an album I've heard about forever, never heard. And I figured it's, it's one of the, the, you know, the weaker ones. Yeah. yeah. It's one of the odd stepchild kind of things. It, God damn it. This this needs more. It's so annoying. More love, yeah. 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 Also, I think they put it together in like no time. Yeah, it was like yeah. a few days, right? I think maybe like four days. That's ridiculous. Yeah. There's so, it's good writing. It was just because like three they, days you know, rehearsal, six days recording. Jesus okay. Christ, man. Like, yeah. So they didn't want to go too long without releasing an album. So yeah. they did this one, threw it together. I mean, this together. to this day, I feel like they don't want to go too long or <laughs> releasing an album more so now maybe yeah uh, that's the man these guys like, I keep saying like they they were made for each other the fact that they can work this well <laughs> so quickly and, and it's just it's beautiful it's, it's beautiful yeah thing. yeah if uh if i had to sit through prick to get honky well worth it yeah and uh, we did that's a positive it is so. yeah yeah well that's I the think end of this uh, era, we hit two hours. We hit two hours. Yeah. I'm fucking. I'm spent. Spent. But this was the obviously one of the super funnest, fun, the yeah. funnest ones to do. God, you know, it's episode 100. What do you want? Exactly. We're gonna do with fucking the Beatles, you assholes. We were. Fucking, we were gonna. You should have had like party hats or something I, and like, <laughs> balloons. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we were gonna do the Beatles like when we first started the podcast. Like, let's do episode 100 Beatles, but. No, we got this. Is what we love. This is our Beatles, dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You did the the best thing, next best thing. I mean, <laughs> at this point in my <laughs> life, I think I've listened to the Melvins more often. Hundred percent. Yeah, not even not even a question for me. Uh, and they've had a much bigger impact. Not that the Beatles ain't good. Whatever you angry people, it doesn't matter. It's not that we don't mean it. If you're here this I, long, I you think, like us uh, already. I so think, I think the Beatles are actually very good. They're very good. We'll get into that. That is a Patreon exclusive. If you want to <laughs> patronize us, <laughs> if we get a hundred patrons, then we'll do the Beatles and other solo albums. But until then, we're going to be doing weird crazy metal and whatever the hell else that people pay us to do uh but fun era good era the era i have the most experience with and the most history with uh i'm assuming you as well yeah yeah that's true uh but recap robert for uh all your picks all your picks uh personal favorite bullhead uh least and then it's worst yep i mean i guess i'm just gonna lump it together for lysol which is a a great album (laughs) Son of a bitch. <laughs> just you know, the Melvins don't need to do covers. That's yeah, I well, disagree. I, they, I, they have some good ones, but 
they don't need to do it. Well, they have done a full album of covers, they, but we'll I do feel that like later. It's almost fuck done. around, I fuck around, yeah. I fuck around. Maybe that's a better example. Um, oh, and the last one was it best? Best is Stag. That's I'm so surprised. I'm so I'm surprised, surprised too. I'm surprised by all my picks, actually. <laughs> I'm surprised by all, well, not Bullhead so much. No, I am because I I genuinely thought Glue Port Streaming was going to get something. I, I thought surprised. so too. I thought yeah. so too. It deserves something. Yeah. Thumbs up. Alex. Uh, personal favorite. Bullhead. Start to finish. It's fucking classic. Uh, worst. Least favorite. Prick. Don't. There's There's no fuck. Unless you're a psycho. There's no reason to listen to <laughs> if it. You listen to, if you listen to music for comedy, maybe you'll find something. If you like the boredoms. <laughs> oh, right. And then uh, my best to even my amazement is Stoner Witch. And me, best bullhead. They like it, but I like it a little bit more uh, in, in that area. Of, 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 I find it to be such a strong entry point. Uh, not, th- not that there aren't others, but for me. Uh, Lysol, personal favorite. All right. I know it has the covers. I know it has covers. and that's, They're good covers. They're good covers, and it just kicks my ass the most. It just kicks my ass more than all of them. That's all it is. And Worsley's favorite prick. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's just come on. He, they know it. They know it. They know it. They, they know said it. it. They said it. <laughs> they said it was a joke. And I like jokes. <laughs> that <laughs> makes a lot of fucking ah, sense. Shit, I can't argue with that. But thank you so much for listening and, and watching. And this has been very fun. We've been at this for a hundred episodes. I've never done a hundred of anything in Neither my life. I, let alone every week. Every week. Not missed a single week. Dude, if I worked out like this, I'd be a different person. Hundred push-ups. That's hard. Every episode. Uh, I'm not doing that, but God damn it, I can think about doing it. Uh, but yeah, thank you all for sticking with us along the way and for supporting and for patronizing and all that stuff. If you want to, if you're new and want to support us, you know, subscribe on all the places, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, 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 like, subscribe, all those fucking bells and buttons and all that shit. Patreon.com slash every album ever if you want to actually support us and give us money to, you know, do what we do because we, yeah, we get hungry every now and then. I do at least. Uh, you can also jump the line if you want to suggest an artist for us. All tier two patrons get to jump the line. And, uh, you know, bonus episodes, early access to certain episodes, discounts off merch. Go check out that new merch. Please do that. And you can follow me at Pander Monkey, Alex at Mother Puncture, and Robert in all his endeavors. Hoodpass.wick. You'll find a link. H O O D. P-A-S-S dot W-I-C. Correct. There we go. There it is. Uh, and yeah, Spotify plays on a whole bunch of these Melvin's albums. You can find a link in the description. You know, we got playlists associated with every episode, as you know, every album ever dot com for everything. So now that we're done with that, Robert. Oh, what a gentleman. Oh, he got it. He got he got yo, he going guest. He better pick something good. If you pick anything from Prick, I will throw this microphone at you. I, I can't even do that, can I? Uh, no. Uh, um, it's way more complicated. Yeah, like, please don't call on do YouTube. Do you want to just put it on without saying it? I would rather you say it. Yeah. And if, <laughs> okay. In the unlikely event. You, you guys want, know me better than that by now. In the unlikely event you want something from Honky, I got that downloaded on the phone, but okay. I doubt you're going I'll there. I'll say it and then put it on? Yeah. Yep. Uh, I'm going to have to go with something that's pretty pretty good representation of what the melvins do um and to me seems a little bit overlooked so i'm just gonna give it a little bit more love here do it and that's gonna be at the stake hell yes i actually i'm very excited yes so thank you all so much for listening and watching see ya